It's a dream. And the Moda Super Series Week Three Champion Bradley Roo. Oh, Go what an incredible Jonathan performance! Is he going to follow up with the one six one? Go it's finishing Jonathan of a perfect Jonathan. nature from Joe Croft. Jonathan. What a difference a finish can make. The Go double 16 for one, three, four. Double 18 to extend this Go game. And it's another ton plus out Jump on an off. evening which has been littered with them. Well, we saw a plethora of ton plus finishes last night. Go and Neil Jump Duff the delivers the first leg. of this evening. Yeah, it, it's similar to the shootout. One leg at thousand and one Dean. Oh, you beauty. Hello, good evening. It's the hottest ticket in town, the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. It is packed to the rafters, filled to the brim and at full capacity this evening for a full throttle evening of darts here on the South Coast. Week four feels like a week that has been brimming and it could well come to the boil this evening. Well, a great night of arrows has to have two great pundits and we've got just the ticket. Chris Mason's been here from Dart One and we couldn't have a Saturday night here without the asset Paul Nicholson. Now, we've been been together on a lot of champions nights here and when you look at the crowd that's out there behind us it feels fairly similar to that it does feel similar to that henry because like you say we've been to a lot of saturday nights uh, previously and some of them may attract more fans than others and the local influence is definitely being felt tonight we've seen adam lipscomb try to qualify for a saturday night previously he's missed out by some of the finest margins but we always wondered what it would be like in this place if he made it because there was never any guarantee that he would now that he has we've got the answer to that question because this place is full but it absolutely is jam-packed to the rafters adam lipscomb is going to be the hometown favorite but the defending champion tops the bill as far as qualifiers for tonight is concerned scott taylor making his way through to this evening one of six that are in action tonight neil duff the former wdf world champion in there joe croft who's been so impressive in recent times alongside chas barstow and Steve Hine in action. So those are the six players that are making their way through to tonight's final. Let's talk about how we got to that particular point. We'll begin with Monday morning and we'll begin with Group A, which was decided and won by Scott Taylor, who he was up here early on this week, May, said that he wasn't playing to the best of his ability. He didn't feel like he was playing at his best, but still managed to find a way to win the group. It's what good players do and they're, they're not at their best. They, they find a way and... Over the course of three days, you know, an average approaching 90, which I'm sure he'd be pleased with. He had a couple of big 105 averages in there as well. But uh, mine and Nico's concern or worry for, for Scott is the range. It's just too big and he could come unstuck tonight. Particularly when it's such a short course group stage format. There's been a couple of days where he's got out the gates quite slowly. There's been other days where he's got out the gate quickly. He's going to have to have the latter this evening, it's fair to say. Yeah, very fair. Mace makes a great point about the range. I think that's the negative for this week because the highs have been very high. The lows are well below what we'd expect from a bad game from Scott. We know that that cannot happen tonight, but his experience, particularly in the last six weeks, it's been very good on Saturday nights. He's won twice on a Saturday night here this year already. So he will know that he can get it done, but is he playing the same darts as he was maybe four or five weeks ago? We are going to find out tonight. We will find out tonight. So that was Group A. We then saw Groups B and C come into play on Thursday and Friday. We'll begin with Group B. What an interesting group it was as well. It was won in the end by Neil Duff. And we've been speaking about this all week, about how Neil Duff seems to peak at the right time. And last night we saw very much glimpses of that. Yeah, I, this, is, this is quite fascinating because... Although you're not really worried about the range for Neil Duff, he's a different type of player. He's, he's a player that plays himself into form and more often than not almost gets it right in terms of peaking across the week. My, my, my big worry, and it's a worry for Adam Lipscomb, not a concern for Neil Duff, is the fact that Neil Duff was on plus 11 on exactly the same amount of points. Adam Lipscomb was on minus one. That's an 11 leg swing and that's got to be cause for concern, uh, especially on a night like tonight, which is filled with players of very, very similar ability. The player with the, the ultimate high ceiling, without question, is, um, is Scott. Uh, and close behind him, in, especially in, in recent months, is Neil Duff, because he's been popping in some big, big averages at key moments uh, here at the Super Series. 
Talking about popping in averages, Adam Litscom has played above anything we've seen from him before here at the Live Lounge. Going to be playing in front of a home crowd here this evening. We saw him hit ton plus checkouts of fun, but it's going to be a completely different feeling when he's out there and he's got his own people watching him. Yeah, one of, thing, one of two things is going to happen tonight. He will feel the nerves and the expectation or he will thrive. Moments like you've just seen there with two double 19s, if he can pop shots like that in tonight, then this place is going to get the decibelometer over 100. Of that, there is no doubt. But I stand by my previous statement. He's either going to thrive in this situation or he won't. There's no middle ground. Yeah, they're either going to become his fourth dart or a weight on his shoulders because of the expectation and, uh, and the fact that he's tried so many times to, to reach this point. Uh, you know, if, if I had the opportunity to speak to him, I'd just, just go out there and have some fun with it and enjoy it rather than think about winning the whole thing. Just go and have some fun. Uh, embrace the, your friends and your family and your teammates that have managed to get a ticket because they were hard mm. to come by. And, and just, just go out there and have some fun. Where are we at with Chaz Barso at the minute, in your opinion, Mace? His numbers are too low. Uh, I know he's been playing well locally and um, picking up you know, small little tournament titles and he's been playing well in the singles league events that are, there's many of around the Portsmouth and, and Southampton area. but. Yeah, his numbers don't stack up tonight. Group C, this is how the table finished up. It was Hein and Croft that made their way through. I don't think I've ever known a group pool where the two players that went through will be disappointed with the way that they played. I think they've got every right to feel disappointed because some of the people behind them who maybe have got reputation coming into maybe a first week, like Jimi Hendrix, they'll be disappointed with their level of play, but they've got to be realistic with where they are. Whereas with Hein and Croft we maybe expect a little bit more from them now because of what Joe has done at the start of this year and the end of last year in ADC darts and hang with his experience. But what is Monday to Friday about? It's about getting to Saturday and then finding your best come Saturday. History tells us they can do that. They've done it before. However, neither of them have done it on a Saturday yet. That may be the big change this week. If they can find it tonight, they can write their own story. And it was quite incredible, that group, because it, it came down to the final two matches. Four players could still qualify, and they were straight shootout games. That shows you how closely knitted together the, those four players were. Right, let's have a look at tonight's group set. And this is what's in play this evening. Scott Taylor, Steve Hunt, Adam Lipscomb making up group one. Joe Croft, Chaz Barza, Neil Duff making up group two. Which one for you, Nico, stands out amongst the other? I like group two. I think it's very even. You can see frailty in each player. It's just a question of who turns up and has that extra bit of pizzazz, which they might require to make the semi-finals or beyond. I think the other group is all about Adam Lipscomb. I think even Scott Taylor coming in as the defending champion can take some pressure off his shoulders because he knows that when he comes out here in game one, that this place is all for Lipscomb. He's the one shouldering the pressure tonight. But I like group two because it's very even. In terms of players that have impressed you the most this week, in terms of players that you think in that group stage you should make it through to the semi-finals, who stands out for you, Mace? Adam, because I've never seen him have that much composure and um, a player that has completely changed the way he plays the game. He, he, was, he would often almost throw a dart away, not on purpose, but just by not giving himself that one little moment. He, he looks... a a much more rounded and, uh, and better player for it. And I've been impressed with him this week. Well, let's have a look at the odds for this evening. Now, we've, what we've done here is we've had a look at the odds for tonight and we compared it with their running average for the week because if we be perfectly honest, mates, they don't really stack up, do they? <laughs> no. The second best player who played two more days of, of play than Scott Taylor, who's, who's only marginally in front, let's have it right, 88.17, but that was in Group A, which he won, so didn't have to play the Thursday and Friday. Adam Lipscomb has played all five days, and his average of 87.9 um, somehow transfers to him being the outsider. Maybe the idea is the fact that he has no experience at this level, um, or they maybe feel that uh, the expectation and anticipation are going to be too much for him. But like I've said, it, sometimes it can, it can work. I'm with Nico. It works one or two ways that that fourth dart energy can sometimes 
go against you. Uh, I, I think it's it's all about how he approaches it. Well, if he gets a good start tonight, yeah. that is going to yeah. shrink yeah, yeah, yeah. in seconds. It's simple as that. We want to know how he handles tonight, and that is what tonight is all about. Neil Duff, 9-2. Considering that he's won two weekly titles, he's won the special tournament, he's bang in form, is that too big? It feels too big, but based on the level of play this week and who he's up against, maybe it feels a bit more fair than 92 suggests. But if I was going to look for someone to have a punt on tonight, I think it might be Duff because of experience, the fact that he knows how to get it done on a Saturday night after a lot of heartbreak before that. It took him a while to get it right. But he likes that winning feeling on a Saturday and he wants it again. Is Duff your man tonight, Mace? Um, it's, I mean, it is hard to look past Scott Taylor because he's, he hasn't been anywhere near his best, yet statistically, whatever metric we look at, he is the best player. He's produced the highest average. He has the highest running average. And, it, and he's, the, he's the defending champion and, and had success just four weeks ago on this stage. So that would be very... Pre I mean, it's all positives for him and it's all very fresh in his mind. Uh, and, and dark players are quite fickle characters and... That, that that will be something that he will he will feed off and think right. I did this four weeks ago. I, I can do it again. But my my only worry is that range in there. He does have a smelly one in him, and I don't think you're going to get away with too many bad games tonight. I think I think it's just too strong a field. Do you know what I'm looking forward to more than anything else this evening? See actually how soundproof this glass is going to be because it's going to be loud, it's going to be proud, it's going to be very walkers this evening. Our first game of the session sees Scott Taylor in action, the defending champion. Now in previous appearances here for the defending champion, only Luke Littler has gone on to make the subsequent Champions Week. So he's looking to buck what is becoming a bit of a trend here at the live lounge. You pause up. He's up against Steve Hyde, the muffin man, looking to make his way through to Champions Week for the first time here in Portsmouth and early on this evening I caught up with both players. Steve, Saturday night for yourself here at the Super Series. How would you assess your level of playing Group C? Well this week obviously I was here a few weeks ago and yesterday was a hard day because I won my first two games and it's easy to look ahead which is the wrong thing to do and I thought oh, I need one more win. Then you lose one and you start the panic sets in and you think where's your next win coming from but luckily I got my win in the last game and got through. Were you aware of the knockout scenario that last match? Of course, yeah, we all did. I mean, uh, uh, the early part of the day, it looked like it was pretty clear cut who was going to go through. Then me and Joe lost a couple of games, and then it realised it was knockout or else. You know, and luckily I won that game. Of course, it adds pressure, but in some ways, does it simplify the situation because you're so used to playing knockout games? Of course. I mean, obviously, when it got to the last game, it was um, win or you're out. But in the back of your mind, then you're thinking. I should have already been through because I had my chat, you know, but like I say, the panic's set in. But tonight starts a new night and I'm mean, here. Yeah. Fresh night, fresh start. How much are you looking forward to embracing it? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I've, I've played a lot of big crowds. The crowd's going to be raucous tonight, obviously, with a couple of local lads in it. Adam and Chaz are top guys. And I'm sure the supporters will give all the best respect to all everybody. I bet you must have looked at that draw for Adam Lipscomb in that group. You must have thought at some point tonight you're going to have to go up against him. You're going to have to go up against that Will Walker's crowd. Of course, yeah. If it wasn't Adam, it would have been Chaz. So um, whoever it would have been, I knew I'd have got one of them. Um, but what will be, will be. We've seen some real good stuff from yourself over the last six months or so. How much would picking up one of these titles be a real combination of that upturn in form? Well, of course. I mean, you know, the thing is that it's easy to fall out of form and you think so, you analyse yourself too much sometimes. But generally, I ain't been doing much too wrong. But Touchwood, the last few months, it's been going good. I've been playing a lot, a lot better. You know, my average has gone up, you know, and obviously if I keep playing Sunday and playing out, then good things will happen to me, hopefully. We wish you all the very best, Steve. Good luck. Cheers. Thank you, Henry. Scott, Saturday night again here at the Super Series. This is becoming very familiar territory for yourself now. Yeah, I think, I think this might be eight or nine times in a row, but um, still got a put a performance in, get it done really, so see how it goes. What is it about this place that just makes you tick so much? I don't know, it's um, great. The players that come in are, are always great, that I've been with anyway, and um, the stage is amazing. Prize money's good, so got to get your head on. Prize which you know all too well about, defending champion this week. How has it felt coming into it, defending this particular title? Yeah, I was... Uh, <sighs> 
a bit nervy coming in on Monday and then I didn't really play well Monday to Wednesday, but, but I feel all right now. I'll see how it goes tonight. In some ways, can the two days off actually mean you can come back into it as a, as a new tournament to a certain extent? Yeah, uh, the, the break kind of did, did me well, especially with um, I'll be going into hospital. But, um, was, um, see how it goes tonight and hopefully I'll be, fingers crossed, to be a winner again. I suppose it makes starts a bigger picture, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, they're, they're in good hands and they're both doing all right now, so we'll see, we'll see what happens with them and hopefully be on during the week. We wish you all the very best with that. In terms of the darts this evening, it's a tough field. You're going to be playing the local favourite as well in Adam Lipscomb. So you're going to have a big crowd there, but you know for one of those matches that they're definitely not going to be on your side. Oh, yeah, definitely. But bring them on. I've, I had it here last time with uh, Luke Littler in the semi, so bring them on. I love it. I was going to say, you're one of those that these are the nights, these are what you play for, aren't they? Def definitely. And if you, don't, if, if you don't enjoy it, you shouldn't be here. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens, but it should be good. We wish you well. Scott, good luck. Thank you. But he's had one of these hit against him already today, has Steve Hine. And there's another one. He doesn't have the longest streak of wins. Scott Taylor has got a 1-4-1 one one though for a 15 dart at. Taylor for 112 to stop Ross from getting a shot at that very number. Double top. On a That's why we read him, because he's just very, very good. Well, the last time Scott Taylor saw a crowd like this, he was picking up the big jackpot. He embraced the crowd on that occasion, now he's embracing them again here. His first assignment is the Muffin Man, Steve Hine, who's most certainly enjoyed his evening in front of the crowd as well. So it's Taylor against Hine to kickstart the evening's action. Let's see how the defending champion starts off in the company of Paul Nicholson. And a very good evening to Chris Mason. Good evening, Henry. Good evening, everybody. And good evening to my old pal, Nico. Welcome back, Paul. Thank you very much indeed. This is Saturday night, and this is Scott Taylor, who is always here on a Saturday night when he comes into qualifying at the start of any particular week because he said in that interview that he thinks it was eight or nine that he'd got through consecutively in weekly terms well scott we can confirm you are seven from seven and if you think that's good we'll get out of charles barstool later because his record is just a little bit better but he's up against the muffin man is scott taylor and this is his first challenge For in Bag, group one scott to throw first. yeah first meeting Game of on. the week between the two plenty of support for both players good to see it's no denying, of course, 60. the vast majority here for the local hero, man of the moment, Adam Lipscomb. But what a start this is for Steve Hine. Oh, <laughs> Do you know Love what? It. He might be called the Muffin Man, but he made that look like a piece of cake. I cannot remember, since we came here on September 3rd, 2022, a louder atmosphere on a Saturday night outside of a Champions Night. Yeah, it's got a really lovely feel to it. We've had a, we've had a pop down and meet a few old friends and a few ex-colleagues are, are here this evening. It just goes to show that the local influence can have 60. such a big impact. Now, how big an impact will it have? Well, you've got Ch Chaz Barstow as well, haven't you? Yeah, largely forgotten that it's 41. two locals that are here tonight. But I wonder what the crowds are going to be like in these games for the players that aren't local. Yeah, well, they've been very good so far. And they're going to be entertained royally. And, of course, a lot of people who are here for Adam will be here for Chaz as well because they're, they're county teammates, of course. And 60. I do believe they play in the same league team. Yeah, the Hampshire Massive are here. But the start from Taylor is effective. We would expect it to be because he's averaging more this week than anybody. And we got our heads together a little bit earlier tonight saying, not even sure he played that well. No. <laughs> no, the exception of those those two, Gavin, there was one particular match where he he was fantastic and he, he, missed, a, he missed a double 18 and a double 9 inside at the split. 
and still ended up with an average in excess of 105. Had he taken it out Steve in dart two or dart three on the finish, he would have had an average of in excess of 110, 100. which would have been a, a PB for him. Yeah, this is group one involving Taylor and Hein, and Lipscomb is in this group. 60. Both of these players know that they're going to be up against it with the crowd and an upturn in form of Lipscomb. Don't forget about that. He's playing better. Nine, That's why he's here on a Saturday night. Group two has Barstow. It has the former WDF champ, Duff, and Joe Croft. Yeah, that's rather tasty. One. Don't forget, if you want to get in touch, at MSS Darts, all one word, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm not sure if Nico's using that particular platform at the moment. If he is, he'll have the app open. And if you have any questions or comments via that route, please get in touch. Or you can get in touch via our chat room on our Moda Super Series Stoke YouTube channel. And if you're watching on there, thank you very much for getting us over 32,000 subscribers. Bullseye. That was for 341 in six darts. I think it's fair to say that Scott Taylor's got the bit between his teeth tonight and he's really enjoying the noise. Yeah, he's, he's having to play well, isn't he? Scott, you require 45. Double top. Now tens. Gives him a 2 0 lead. And we all Scott know Taylor. by now, if you're a regular viewer on a Saturday night, that if you get a big win in your first game, You've already got one foot so in the semis. Scott to throw yeah, first. 17 dart. Game on. Hold, followed by a 15 dart break. Yeah, as I was saying, you get in touch via the chat on the YouTube channel. Any questions or comments? Try and keep them as sensible and as clean as possible. I don't want to have a night of letting you have a bit of a a bit of a time out on the naughty step. But thank you for all of those new subscribers. Please continue to hit that. Subscribe button and don't forget, give us a thumbs up. Only takes a a millisecond. Plenty of people already in the chat room, approaching eleven hundred. Evening, Ricky. Evening, Stuart. Impetus definitely with the man from Bolton. Two six five after six. Can't get to a finish on that occasion, but. When he looks at the score there to his left-hand side of the stage, he will see something that he was happy with for about five or six seconds. Still the favourite for the leg because he's got six from here. But is he taking these numbers out in six enough this week? Well, outside of Neil Duff, he is the furthest traveller. I know they do that in horse racing, don't they? Says which ones, which oh, horse has travelled the most distance to get to the course? Got your require 108. It's certainly Neil Duff, followed by this man. Scott spent so much time in Portsmouth, he could probably drive here blindfolded. He won't do that, though. Oh, he was almost 3-0 up. Steve, you require 145. Big ask for a big man from Coventry. And too big an ask. Scott Taylor will now go for tens again Scott, you require for 20. three nil. Well, can't question 16. whether he attacked Steve the double or not because it was 64. straight at it. Will it be a costly miss? Could be. And is. Great finishing from the Muffin Man who gives the crowd exactly what they want. He, he must have a, a few people have travelled down from the Midlands. Well, it's Steve to throw first. And it is a break back. This will feel very, very different to these guys. They've been to Saturdays before. And in fact, Steve One Hine was here on Saturday night when Scott was in week 12 of the previous series. Yeah, didn't, didn't Steve Hine just miss out on count back on legs? It was very tight that night, but it was Taylor that won. And then he would win the following Saturday as well for the biggest check we could possibly dish out at that stage. But now, in Series 7, that check is larger at the end of the rainbow. At the end of May, someone's going to get their mitts on £25,000. After in, in, in the amateur scene, you'd have to win a... A world's of some description to get more money than that, whether it be a, a world masters or a, a world championships. I just wonder how much 
someone could potentially cash here this year. Could they do what Littler did in 2023? He got over £50,000 in prize money at this venue alone. Someone like Taylor could do the same. Scott, you require 106. Big ask for him this time. And it's, it's just so good for the players, especially those with the ambition to go to Q school, because if you've got that as a little insurance policy in the in the bank account to cover your expenses, possibly for one, maybe two years, it makes a huge, huge difference. And so could that dart. Scott, you're Let's find out if Taylor takes this 107 first. He doesn't get a dart at a double. 51. This game has changed. Steve, requires 16. All because of one turn from Taylor, potentially, in the previous leg to this. However, no things score. have changed again. Huge mistake. Is this payback? Scott, you require 56. Double top. Game really big shot. Left. What Scott could have been 3-0 to Scott Taylor, it was turned around and it could have been 2-2. Chances afoot for both players here and valuable misses by both as well. Absolutely. Hungry Ross asks, are these players paid for taking part in this event? Well, it's a, a, a structured 36. prize fund. So depending on where you finish in Group A, depends how much money you get. The same for Group B and the same for Group C. And then... The, there's a winner's prize for tonight, runners-up prize, and so on and so forth. 79. I wonder if Taylor right now is feeling the relief that we think he could be feeling. Just imagine how he would have felt at 2-2 when he was staring at 20 points for 3-0. That's the first start he's looking for, and that should be a max. Nine times out of ten. Mystic Mason has lost his mantle. <laughs> he had to hit that, didn't he? Yeah, it was, it was begging. Gaping hole 57. just underneath those two guides. It was the Muffin Man who started the 180 train here tonight. And remember, if you're having a flutter on anything tonight, whether it's most 180s, total 180s, or match results, please remember it's over 18s only. Please gamble responsibly and be gambleaware.org for more information. Scott, you require uh, and when you do lose, which you will, don't moan about it. You put the bet on. Oh, and now how valuable will that be? Steve, you require 112. Well, even if it was a single 20 nick up, it makes a huge difference. Double 16. Go Steve Hine makes it a moot point. They're both enjoying this, and so are we. I hope you are too on YouTube, because this atmosphere is like nothing I've ever felt or heard on a Saturday outside of a Champions Week. It is brilliant in here. Yep. And to capacity up on the balcony as well. 123. Sometimes you need that extra jolt of adrenaline, which you are going to get from other people who love their darts. Over the last 36 hours... The clamouring for tickets for this tonight has been like nothing else yeah, one, in the last two years. <laughs> once, once Adam Liskin was confirmed as qualified, it was, yeah, it was off the hook. I think the Motor Super Series producers were even thinking about how soon would it take to put an extension up? If you do want to book your tickets for future weeks... Might want to have a look at the, sh oh, the schedules and see who's local and who might qualify. So get your tickets rather early via dartshop.tv. Yep, and Lammy wants to know, how do I enter the Super Series as a player? Well, head over to Darts Atlas or the Amateur Dart Circuit. All Nine the information on there. I'm many things, but my name is not Google. I wish it was. Beautiful 140 from Hine. Gets to 112 Scott, again, which is just taken. And he's going to get another look at it as well. He's such a hard player to beat, isn't he? 58. He's like trying to move Steve, you require a 100 kilogram lump of granite. Double top this time. 92. My word, that was close. Scott, you require and Taylor's got a crack at it himself. 
to get his first two points of the night. He needs three 18s and tops. He gets tops, and that's a huge win. That two-leg gap between himself and Hein could be huge in the race to see who makes the final four from Group 1. Adam Lipscomb will be the opponent of both of those players a little bit later on, but that's what you've just seen. Scott Taylor can play better than that, but as you've already seen tonight at the start of the show, that's possibly one of his bad games out the way. He's still got a lot more in the tank. Steve Hines going to have to find an awful lot when he comes back in Game 3 against the local favourite. When we come back, we'll start Group 2, and it's two weekly winners going head-to-head -head in Duff and Barstow. Well, welcome back to the Moda Super Series. Our first game of the night has been and gone, and it is Scott Taylor who sees himself in the winner's enclosure. The defending champion still on course to successfully do and defend that uh, particular crown. Our second game of the evening session sees Neil Duff in action, the former WDF world champion who's got a bit of a knack here of getting better as the week goes along. He progressed his way slowly but surely through Group A into a position where he put himself into Group B, and from that point onwards, he really was an unstoppable machine. I mean, it's Chaz Barso, who's had a recent upturn in form in recent months, but hasn't yielded it as much as he would have liked to the, uh, over the last couple of days or so. Early on the evening, I caught up with both players to get their assessments headed tonight. Chaz, back into Saturday night here at the Super Series. How would you assess your Group E campaign? Um, played a right Thursday. Uh, Friday was a real struggle. Just couldn't get going. Had a really good game against Adam, but couldn't really find a lot. It's strange. I've been playing so well, but that starts. How weird is it when you feel like you go into it with a lot of confidence, then one game doesn't quite go your way? And particularly in a group stage final, do you find yourself maybe then chasing after that point? You do chase after it, and you think about it too much probably, but you, you've got to just switch off and get on with the next game. That's, that's how darts goes. You did the damage on night one, got yourself through, back on a Saturday night, and this is becoming a bit more familiar territory for you now. You said that at times you prefer the Southampton venue. Are you becoming more accustomed to this one now? 
Um, I'm, all, I'm getting more used to Portsmouth now. I'd, I'd prefer Southampton. It's obviously behind closed doors and it's a totally different atmosphere. But I'm getting used to this and I, and I like it here. It's, it's, it's all good. Everyone's been talking about Adam Lipscomb having the home support. You'll bring your load down as well. But you and Adam get along quite well. So I suppose the support with you two being in contrasting groups should be okay, shouldn't it? Yeah, um, it'll be good. A lot of the people that Adam have got here, I know anyway, through dark leagues and, 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 and will probably support me as well. Well, I hope they support me as well. Um, but it's good. It's, it's great that Adam's got through and it's, a, it's going to be a great crowd tonight. So it, it's all, it's, it's brilliant. I get the sense in the practice room there's a real buzz about tonight. Yeah, yeah. And, and even, you know, the fact that it's a sellout and it's, it's going to be busy. I think we're all quite looking forward to it. It's going to, it's going to be a really good night. And how much would you like to lift another one here, particularly in front oh. of a lot of people you know? It'd be absolutely amazing. Yeah, I've done it once and, and I feel like I'm playing well enough to do it again. I'm going to have to sharpen up tonight, but really hope I win it tonight, yeah. We wish you well. Chaz, good luck. Thank you very much. Neil Duff, Saturday night again here at the Super Series. And once again, you're saving your best starts, it seems, for the latter end of the week. Yeah, I think it's all about how you finish, not how you start. Um, I'm starting to make a bit of a habit this year. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Mace about it today and I'm like, I think Group A, you always have it in the back of your head that you've got that safety net of the sec of the next group. So, um, yeah, I've, I'm I'm happy that I've actually because I didn't play that great Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So to come out Thursday night, Friday night and play well, and uh, yeah, hopefully it continues again tonight. You're a player that it took a, a fair few opportunities to get that elusive first win. You got that first win. Now you're becoming very much accustomed to that enclosure. Has that experience helped you over the course of those previous appearances? Yeah, of, of course. Yeah, it kind of. You know yourself. We talked about it a few times about getting that monkey off your back. And I think once you do, you just kind of let go of the reins and, and let things happen themselves. And now I've got into the habit of winning, and I don't intend that there to change anytime soon. Does this feel like a second home to you now, the Life Lounge? Yeah, I'm actually thinking about buying property down here because it just seems to be down here so often now. Um, I was thinking about it earlier on, and I'm probably one of the few guys who has no aspirations of, of stepping over to the other side, so hopefully I'm going to be here for a long time to come. So for you, does the aspirations think, right, how many can I tick up now? How many can I tick up now in terms of titles? I think, in my own head, it's get a, get a series win. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the next tick box. Is get the series win. Um, I was unfortunate not to be able to play in Champions Week this this time round, but um, yeah, I'll make it up for it. Well, to do that, you got to win tonight, and you got to do it in front of a loud, proud, vocal crowd. But you're the type of player that these nights just fall into the lap of the arms for, aren't they? Yeah, so if we can just kind of give the the, the 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 old the old birds in the in the group, we we smile, and, and then they get them on side. But I, I am actually lucky enough because. Adam and Chaz's friends are here. They're also my friends, so I think it'll be respectful. Um, we'll, we'll be just great and try and put on a show for them. Should be good fun. Neil, wish you all the best. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Just slightly out of form and left. running into a, Neil a very hot Neil Duff. Entering this one, two, six early. Has to start the 19th this time. Double six. Well, he Go saved his best shot on right the at the man. end in Neil Duff. Colin well, McGarry was superb in his demolition of Young Bram. Yeah, he yeah, shot that the was... first load. He's making a little bit of a habit of winning here, isn't he, Neil Duff, the former WDF world champion in action here. He won his qualifying week last time. He won the double start Super Series Cup a few weeks ago as well. He is banging form in the type of form that saw him get to a world final and win a world title. He's up against Chaz Barstow, a man who is beginning to rediscover the form which saw him scare Michael Van Gerwen at the World Championships once upon a time. What can he do here? Let's find out. Paul Nicholson, Chris Mason. Fascinating second game of Saturday night between two players who have made a real habit of making Saturday their own. Maybe not necessarily winning on Saturdays, but always making it. Always is sometimes a word that is used too much. First leg, it's Neil to throw first. However, your own Binks referee, who is not just refereeing the stage tonight, he's the sheriff of a very raucous crowd as well. But get your gills around this one. Neil Duff and Chaz Barstow have been to 16 
qualifying attempts. 134. Collectively, over the last couple of years here in Portsmouth, only one time of all of those has someone missed out. Chaz Barstow is eight 59. from eight in so making Saturday night in Portsmouth. That is remarkable. So he's played in eight weeks, and every week he's played, he's Nine always made six. the Saturday night. Correct. That's, that's incredible. It is. There are people... And Neil Duff's seven from eight, isn't he? He is. It's amazing when you think about it. Adam Nine Lipscomb, six. who was playing in Group 1 in the next match, has been here multiple times and has just yielded the one qualification, which is tonight. 86. These two come here and they automatically think from dart one, I'm going to be there because predominantly they are. Yeah, I suggested 60. to Henry that this particular tie in Group B, they played twice, of course, first on, on uh, sorry, last on, on Thursday night and first on on Friday night were going to be key because I did feel that both these players would qualify. As it turned out, it's one from one, but on Thursday, I know Neil was left frustrated to have lost to Chaz 4-3, but from 3-2 down, Chaz produced two beautiful 110 finishes. Game shot the first there. And he's just but given us an 85 to start down. things off with Neil, a break of throw as well. Neil put it right on Friday by thumping him 4-0. Second leg is Chaz to throw first. Game on. Congratulations to all the players who got through to the semi-finals of the seniors today. Richie Housen was in blistering Fifth floor. And gates. Blitzing gates 10-2. A 9-6 comeback from Martin Adams. Saw him defeat Whoa! Phil Taylor 10-9. Andy Hamilton got the better of the current seniors world champion, John Anderson 10-8. And Eric Richard Rowlands defeated Robert Thornton in a last leg shootout 10-9. Yeah, some comeback there from Rowlands. It may have to be a comeback from Neil Duff Whoa! if he lets Charles run. However, this is the way you try and break back, isn't it? Imagine the decibels if this goes in. They will say, I was there. Oh. He's not there. My word. Hey, that was close. One. Yeah, we haven't seen one for a while, have we? We are due. And this is a time of year where people Fifth, really eight. start to Nearly kick into one. gear. Yeah. For an 11 dart break back. Game Beautiful leg from Neil Duff. Neil Duff. Yeah, well, see, well, next week, he's got every chance of going super lineup, isn't it? Like it's yeah, we've got some decent first. players coming next week, Game and we will on. talk about that a little bit later on in the show. And there's players there that have had nines, and well, Leonard Gates, he's had a nine on that stage. Has indeed. Hasn't been his weekend 40. at the seniors in Blackpool. He will make his way down the M6 motorway and all the way through to Portsmouth for Monday morning. Obviously saving himself for this, Nick. Must be. 94. Well, many congratulations to the ladies who won today in the women's series. Uh, huge stories as Fallon Sherrick won the first one against Bo Greaves and then one Nolan Van hundred. Leuven, her first win and first ton plus average today in beating Katie Sheldon in the second Whoa! final. This game is starting to ignite and the people in the crowd are going to get sore shoulders from lifting those signs. Well, they've been treated to two 40. fabulous games so far. Why do I get the feeling that these two 93. really like the pace of this game? They're just getting on with it. Yep. I wouldn't classify Duff as fast but he doesn't hang around. No, no nonsense player throws his darts, gets 60. out of the way. Chaz, I think it all depends on how much time you want to have at the back of the stage. Chaz seems very level headed, doesn't get bothered by too much. 80. But he will love that last dart. Could be another break imminent. One hundred. A decent approach from Duff, but he will feel that, like the leg is gone. Double ten. And it'll be in the wind. 33. 
Now we require 160. Biggest check out of the night so far, 112, which has been hit twice. Is that still the case? It is. 97. Judge of require. This 20. double cost. Scott Taylor, a 3-0 lead in the previous match. Double five does not cost Chaz. And don't be fooled, it's not just Adam Lipskin that's got fans here tonight. Chaz has brought a few people from the western part of Hampshire as well. Three consecutive breaks of throw in this one. 58. We've already had three 180s. You've got three previous weekly winners here tonight, so that's 50% of your players who have tasted success on a Saturday night. One of them has got a series win, which is Scott Taylor, but the other two are in this match. Everybody else has not done it before. Just a note, a bit of chat room etiquette. Anybody guilty of spoiling will be removed. bit like if you start chatting between throws 29. here and get a bit too loud. You've got to have your etiquette. And the one thing that proves that these are darts people is the order in here right now when the players are playing. Can't beat a bit of game on. They're having a great time. There are players in this crowd. I'm not, yep. I'm not talking about well-known players. I'm talking about aspiring players. There are young Hampshire superstars of the future sitting in that crowd thinking that could be me in about four or five years. Yeah, they were having a... We've got multiple studio locations in here. One with a camera and a board in where some of the players do some some funny challenges. As Barstow hits a second 180 for him and the fourth of this match. Here we go with tops again. Yeah, and that room was full of youth players earlier, really, wasn't it? 95. The entire place is full. But is 95 fulfilled? Oh, Game it's right in the corner. It's the first Just hold and throw of this match. This place is going ballistic. I can tell by the reaction how big that was for, for Barstow. Game He's on. now got a, a, bit of a bit of breathing space, Nico, which is what we... We all love as as a player just a just a chance to 100. really try and kick. When you've been to seven or eight Saturday nights before, you know the intricacies of this this group. If you win four one, if you're Chaz and you get that three leg cushion, you know that you don't have to win your second game. You've got that cushion of knowing that I only have to win a couple of legs. When I play against Joe Croft later, you, of course, 58. want to win both your games. You want to win the group and have the darts in the semi-finals because that's how it works. But it's like that movie Rounders with 96. Ed Norton and Matt Damon and John Malkovich. Always leave yourself with outs. Say that about 59. poker. Duff on a bogey number, as you could hear a blob of vinegar drop on a chip in here right now. That's an old Sid Waddell saying, that's not mine. Yeah, he said that at the Circus Tavern. But he had time on his side. Oh, here's a question for you, Nico. Now we require 68. We'll just see if this goes. I know the answer. It won't take Paul long. Who's Paul and Chris's favourite player of all time? Bob Anderson. 40 One of my favourite people we as well. 40. well. Bob is one of those. Game show the um, but Eric Bristow for me, he was the he was the reason I ultimately played the game. Six leg is Chaz to throw first. Game on. I think having a favourite player is a good thing, and it's a subjective question. But I think the one thing that everybody's got in common when asked that question is you tend to find that your favourite player is the person who made you want to play. Well, I, I was very fortunate. I was playing darts with Bob when I was about eight or nine years of age. 
So I don't really look at him like that. He was me, me dad's Paris 56. partner. 56. I look forward to reading those chapters of your book one day. It will be a bestseller. As, as was Mike Gregory. He played in the Gold Cup with Mike Gregory. And played County with Leighton Reese and Alan Evans. You can't hear it, but I'm shaking my head right now thinking, wow. Now, Chaz can't afford to let his no, foot go off the pedal no, here. Not at this point. Neil's looking for four 19s and 60 on top of that to leave a finish, which 43. he doesn't get close to. Chaz will be thinking 140, 130. I'll take that. Move on with... I think that's in, Nico. Oh, Ooh, no. it's not. I, like you, thought it was yeah, in. Yeah, he left himself a little vulnerable here. No, that's the wrong dart. 40. And that's the wrong result. Mace is right. That second dart should have been to the 19s. 30. Things are getting a bit edgy out there. Heavy duty. Says, great choice, lads. Mine would be the 49. menace. Yeah, well, Dennis is right up there in in both mine and Nico's favourite players of all time. He's my number two. Got to be 19s now. Fair Does get it, but it's trebleless once Chaz again. 161. Is it six darts from here for Chaz? Does he even need six? He does now. 97. But Duffer's going to have to pull a rabbit out of the hat here. One hundred. So tight. 64. Both on the same number. One is for the match. Double four. 56. And this one's to save it. Now we require 64. Could almost feel the tension. One dot at tops, and he's been here before in this match. Four. Doesn't get it right. Could be hugely Charge costly. require... Eight. When we tot up the numbers and the leg difference at the end of this group, because Go Chaz Barstow was won by four legs to two. Chaz Barstow! So in their head-to-head -head for the week, it's now 2-1 to Barstow. Duff would like another crack at him, and if he gets one, that will be good for both players, because it would mean they're both in the final four. Duff loses by four legs to two with the superior average. A very strange game numerically. But as far as the points are concerned, they go to the man from Winchester who starts Group 2 with two points. Steve Hine must win against Lipscomb next. Bring on the noise, Adam. Bring on the noise.
A very warm welcome back to the Modus Super Series where before the break, Chaz Barso got the better of Neil Duff in his opening game of the evening session. Well, it is a jam-packed crowd here in Porsche this evening and they are all here to see one name and that one name is Adam Lipscomb, the hometown favourite. He's got a loud, proud support. I said he's got a loud, proud support. And he's in action up against Steve Hine in our third game of the evening session. Lipscomb who's qualified for his first ever Saturday night here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And as I say, he has brought a big crowd with him. It's going to be a loud, proud, vocal support for him tonight up against the Muffin Man. And let's hear from the man of the moment. He caught up with me earlier on this evening. Adam Litscombe, man of the moment here at the Super Series. What a week it has been for yourself. Just describe it in your own words. Uh, mental, really. I just, I was so nervous yesterday going into the game against Neil because I had Chris on the highlights saying I needed two more, and that should sort of guarantee me through. And I just sort of just went in there head on, ignored what I'd done previously, my previous times I've been on there, and just thought I know how to lose because I've been there so close before. I know what it feels like, and if I do go, it's just mental. Yeah, it's good. Statistically speaking, it's the best you've played. Has it felt like the best you've played here this week? Uh, yeah, 100%. Because every other time I come here, it's always been like, as soon as I get here, it's like trying my hardest to try and get to Saturday. But this time around, it was like, um, just show people, like, you can actually, I don't know, like, throw darts. I, know, I obviously can throw darts, but, like, I can play well as well. I'm not, I'm not just, like, up and down. I could actually throw quite consistent. And then, yeah, I'm happy with it, to be fair. Was it almost a shift of mentality because you've got so many people that come and want to watch you playing on Saturday instead of doing it for other people, trying to do it for yourself this week? Yeah, 100%. A lot of people said about like um, like self-belief. Mm -hmm. Like If you believe in yourself more, like Hendo was saying when last time I was here with him, he was like, you need to believe in your ability a bit more. He said, because I know you can you can do a lot better. He said, I think it holds you back like knowing that you'll get people coming and like, worrying about them more than yourself. So, so yeah, being a bit selfish in a way, really. Well, this place is going to be a bear pit this evening. It's going to be a bear pit for yourself this evening. Can you almost treat this as a home crowd? Can you treat this as like a fourth dart and almost treat it as a home advantage for you? Oh, 100%, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just, I know everyone's respectful as well, so they won't be like... But yeah, it should be rowdy. It'll be funny. Enjoy the night, Adam. Wish you all the best. Thank best. you, mate. Cheers. Either of those darts gone in would have been... Oh, hello, double ten. Oh, super stuff from Adam Lipscomb. Double fifteen. Wow. Another ton topper. Just confirming. Gets it. Wow, one ten. Well, we know what happens here. Tops. Not another one. Adam Lipscomb. Adam Lipscomb is about to take to the stage here in Portsmouth. He takes on Steve Hyatt in his first game of the session. The atmosphere is electric. It was loud a few moments ago, but it is now poised, ready for action. In the commentary box, Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. I'll tell you what, Henry, it's like a crash in here because we've got about 100 big babies in here. It's incredible the noise that came out of these people who have come to the live lounge tonight in support of this guy right here. When he walked on that stage for the first time on, on a Saturday night in his darts career, he's got aspirations, but his one dream over the last 18 months has been to make it to this point. What can he do with it? That is the big question on everybody's lips now. This will be loud if he does Steve good things. First. But don't forget about Game Steve Hine. He must win this match. If he does not, he will leave in the group stage. And Adam knows, because he's watched enough of Saturday the night from the pews and from his own house, which is not that far away. Port Chester's just a little bit further up the road. But if he can win this game, he'll be through with a game to spare. And that might be something that he can use. Yeah, I agree, Nico. It's exactly a point I was about to make. He's in a position where... A win here makes the, the match against Scott Fifth, completely you know. irrelevant because he would be through with a game to spare. 
you'll also be aware of the threat of Steve Hine. Steve Hine Four, played very four. well in defeat to Scott Taylor, averaging 88 and a half. I wonder what the Whoa, adrenaline is like in the veins of Adam right now, probably to the tune of something he's never felt before. Because his career at the age of 31 is very young. 125. We're about to find out where he's going in the near future. Yeah. And make no mistake, if he wins this tonight, they'll be hearing the cries at Fratton Park. <laughs> yeah, he's been a bit of a, a late bloomer, hasn't he? Is that some sort of bakery hey, joke? A late bloomer. <laughs> Adam, it requires 68. 68 for the first leg-winning roar as he goes for tops. Hind makes cakes, not spread. 48. Yeah. Steve, you require 71. And an opportunity to break at the earliest opportunity. He's gone for 51 for 20, Game and he's got it. First Brilliantly done to keep Stay everybody on. quiet, but you've got to respect that finish. It may not just be the case that the Muffin Man has to win Second this game. To throw first. He may have to win by a certain margin because even with a win, like 4-3, he'd have two points and minus one, which is not guaranteed to be through. No. Nope. 140. However, if he was to win by four legs to one, he would be through. He'd have that magical formula in the group one scenario on a Saturday night of two points and a positive leg difference. He's playing well. Yeah, it's, it's Steve did have spells uh, across Thursday and Friday where he played some serious stuff, albeit in, in patches. But if he can get it all right, on the night, he can do big things. 64. I think it's largely forgotten that Steve Hine has won a PDC title as well. It was a long time ago. It was nearly 20 years ago. Aye, but they don't five. just give those away. No, not in any era or any time. Another good first star, and that has taken the pressure off the rest of the visit. One hundred. He's sitting on double eighteen after twelve here, and the noise has disappeared. Yeah, averaging a hundred currently. This is some start. Adam was 55. limited to Steve one dart, a double in leg one, and could find himself two nil down. He is two nil night. down. Steve. And in only three and a half minutes. Roughly the amount of time it takes an elite athlete to run a mile. Steve, to throw first. Steve Hine is at the halfway Game point. On. You spend so much time trying to get here, and then these moments, they fly by. Yeah. yeah feels 96. like a blink of the eye. I can't think of a worse scenario at this point in time than losing your first match heavily and having to beat the defending champion just to stay in. Yeah, that was the awkward nature of this group. 43. But still got chances to win this. This one's far from over. Remember, any win for Adam. And he's through with a game to spare because Steve Iron has already played one match and lost. Following this one, sixty. We'll get our first look on the night. Joe Croft, he faces Charles Barstow. Nobody has ever won 83. a Super Series title, as in a series, after winning week four. However, 97. the people who have won week four in previous series have at different times won a series. Scott Taylor... Won week four in series three. 58. Conan Whitehead won week four in series five. However, they won series in different times. 43. The closest we've ever had from week four was Colin Osborne in series four. He won the week and then he would be runner up to Luke Littler. Oh, Adam Litzkam's had a head of result there because Steve Iron left himself a 162. He's crashed in 140 to leave double ten to put us back on throw. 
That's officially the loudest 140 I've ever heard in Portsmouth. This would be even louder if he gets his first leg. Make them happy, Adam. Make them happy. Make yourself happy. Brilliant last start. Absolutely loaded with pressure and expectation from a capacity crowd here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. If you want to join us down here, you can join us every Saturday. Head over to www.dartshop.tv. Come and be a part of this wonderful atmosphere. I think he's starting to enjoy this. I've not seen a game like this before in Portsmouth. This is being played in the right spirit. This is not mean against each other, but they both want to win tonight. And every single person who has found a ticket somehow to get here tonight, they're loving this atmosphere, as are we. This is borderline louder than any time we've ever had at Portsmouth. Oh, he's gone full on Luke Miller as the Muffin Man. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I played him in the World Championship. I don't know what year it was. It was a long, long time ago. And he actually, he was actually doing those kind of antics and absolutely rattled me in the first set. I don't think he can forget about the fact that he might be having fun and using the showmanship, but he's the one under more pressure. Absolutely. He has to win. Double 14. Could have won three of the legs by now. Steve, you require 150. Could be three one up. He was that close to staring a double 18 and possibly three one down. Adam, you require double seven. He's going to split it. Double four. Do we have a level game? Six. He misses it double. One from eight, Steve, Nico. Require 36. Hine, two from two. Game shot the That's three from man. four. Stay this is hard. definitely going well for the Muffin Man. If he wins this leg on throw, he's going to be through. And he's not Fifth winning it's because Steve it's to throw first. under par. He's averaging... Game on. Well, he's, he's upped his level from match one to 93.19 currently. Oh, this is a nightmare for Adam. He has not played terribly. In fact, he's 28. almost on par for what he's done this week. However, if he loses this leg, he's going to have to beat Scott Taylor by a country five. mile. And you just can't forecast anybody Nine, beating six. Scott Taylor in this format to nil or to one ever because he's just a brilliant player. It's actually a more realistic situation in my mind that Adam can win three straight legs in this game as opposed to winning three or four straight legs in the next. Totally agree. 100. Is he going 19's first here? He's going to start on the 60, which means a finish is not going to be left. 100. Great comment on the chat from Ego Chip. Did he put beans in his muffins? Well, he's full of beans tonight, isn't he, Steve Hine? He is loving it. You do get beans in muffins if you're a vegan. You do use them. Soybeans. 36. Okay, it is a finish. He's still thinking straight. Might have to go. Will have to go. Well... Just going to check if this place Adam, has got a roof. It might not have in a second. Oh, we were all holding our breath to see if he was going to get a shot. But now, things are getting very critical. Steve, you require Double top for the Muffin Man. And his doubling performance has got him through. Steve Amazingly, Hine. Steve Hine, who has sat back here on Saturday night and seen Adam Lipscomb and Scott Taylor take all the plaudits, but it's the Muffin Man who's first through to the semi-finals tonight. 
He's got two points and a positive leg difference, meaning he goes through with a very fine performance. But look at the doubling. Four hits from five. He got a chance. He took his chances. And now Adam Lipscomb has got a very tough task ahead of him when he comes back in game number five. Like Mace mentioned, we'll get our first look at Joe Croft. And he's up against Chaz Barstow, who can book his place if he wins the next match as well. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. Now, there's a few things you should do in Portsmouth, or not do in Portsmouth, if you want to be a popular person. Well, say you support Southampton, say you don't like the Spinnaker Tower, and be Adam Lipscomb. But in fairness to Steve Hine, he has won plenty of friends here at the live lounge in Portsmouth, even though he has defeated the hometown favourite. Right, one last player to see this evening, that is Joe Croft in action. He won Group C, but it wasn't convincing by any margin whatsoever. He is hoping to improve this evening. If he is going to pick up a first weekly crown. Now, he takes on Chaz Barstow, a man who's already been in the winner's enclosure this evening, getting the bed of the former WDF world champ, Neil Duff. Well, early on this evening, I caught up with Joe to get his assessments ahead of tonight. Well, Joe, you've been waiting for this moment to make it through to a Saturday night here at the Super Series. First of all, how does it feel? Uh, yeah, it feels good. Uh, finally hit the target. But um, how I've done it, a bit suspect to how I've done it, but um, I made it. So I, I did, really didn't perform very well, but I, I just ground out and I won. So. How would you assess it overall? As you say, in terms of grit and determination, you showed that at times, but maybe not the level of performance that maybe we've come to expect you in recent times. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I think probably Mason was probably right. Um, probably wanted it too much mm -hmm. um, at times. But again, it's just finding a way to win. You can't win pretty all the time. And for me to get better in the game, I can't keep relying on other, other results, you know, and that's what I pretty much ended up doing. But um, I got there, mm -hmm. so... So, considering the fact that you want to get through to the Saturday night, can you almost relax a little bit more now? And they've got into the Saturday. Yeah, I've got. At the end of the day, I've 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 hit my target. What I set, I set little hurdles, uh, little targets. 
um, just jump over them and, and hit them, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I'm 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 glad I can relax now. I'm glad I'm here. So yeah. In front of a crowd tonight, the, actually the atmosphere and the stage and the way things work here, I suppose it's kind of similar to the UK Open set in terms of Reds and the outside balls. So it shouldn't be anything really too new to you, should it? Uh, to, to be fair, now there's people in here, it's, it's, it's no different to a county venue for me. You know, that's, that's my mindset and where it is now. Um, I block everything else out and, and just get on with it now. So people, whether they're there or not, doesn't bother me. So, yeah. Another target. <laughs> it's another target. It's another big night. You've had a real good last six months or so, but how much would winning a night here compared to what you have achieved recently? Oh, it'd be massive. It would be huge for me. Um, like I say, it, it, it will be the next step, but I can relax. Mm. I, I've, I've hit my target for now, so anything more than this is a bonus now. So, But I'm, I'm, I'm determined to do uh, what I haven't done the last two days and, and, and pick my A game out of it, so... Well, we look forward to seeing that in action. It's all seeing you in action, Joe. Good luck. Thank you, mate. By yeah. doing magnificent things, like Game pinning tum topping the finishes. Game shot the so you're going to follow up with the 161. Game it's finishing of a perfect player. nature from Joe Croft. Game. To quote Crofty, it's lights out and away we throw here at the Super Series. And he is hoping to cross the first corner and hoping to make it to the chequered flag later on this evening and he can then spray the champagne on the top of the podium. Well, it might well be a race against time, but Chaz Barto has got himself in a bit of a lead as far as this group is concerned. He's got a little bit of DRS, a little bit of comfortability as far as this group is concerned. Well, if Barstow wins this one, it makes Croft and Duff a last game shootout. Let's see what happens in this one. I don't expect any My Walker type antics from Paul Nicholson or Chris Mason. I think this one for Chaz is a great chance to get through and to just sit back and let everybody else suffer for a, about 45 minutes at least. He's done a very difficult thing already, which is beat a former world champion with an inferior average of 10. How he did that, he probably doesn't even know. But now as Joe Croft starts his campaign tonight, first the last person to do so, to throw first. he already says Game he's on. accomplished his goal, Mace. He says the pressure's off. I'm not sure I'll buy that. <laughs> no, neither do I. He wants to win it. Trust me. But he is a, he's a, he's a level headed man he's been in and around the sport his entire life of course the 60. grandson of ollie and lorna croft both sadly no longer with us 42. ollie croft was the well, part of the creation of the bdo which then 44 effectively Gave us what we saw on our screens in the 70s, 80s, and predominantly the 90s. 45. And I think it's really nice that certain legacies can live on into future generations. Who knows? What could possibly be the legacy of the future bar stores? The was future Crofts. There was another Croft, of course, at Lakeside in David. <laughs> the initial... Initially, the darts 99. commentator who went on, who's now the lead commentator for Sky's Formula One coverage, and still occasionally dips his toes in 100. in the darts, doesn't he? From time to time, lovely guy, Crofty. Yeah, still loves to to talk about darts. He's he's very much up on it. He always keeps in touch. 41. He'd be fascinated by what's happening here tonight, as we all are. But his namesake has got a decent chance here of taking this first leg. If he can get a good approach here, that's a great second dart. And a very aggressive third. Like 140. However, bar store, 140, nowhere near. Well, the one thing Joe won't lack is confidence and belief. One and if he can, Joe, you require 58. get that happy balance of not feeling like there's any pressure but believe he can do it, 18. he may well do it. Chaz, you require He's definitely 40. more prepared than he was previously when he came to the Super Series at the end of last year. 30. Is he prepared to take the Joey lead with a break of throw? 40. 
only a couple of weeks removed from making his UK Open debut, where he did not disgrace himself at all. But he doesn't take the lead. They've both had chances in this first Charge leg. Require 10. It's getting a bit scruffy. Double two. Eight. It remains scruffy. Joey Require 5. Double two for Joe. Game and he does take the lead. Joe Croft. With a very Michael Jordan-esque leg in 23. Well, I'm not going to throw you under the bus, Nico, Second so if you don't want Joe to answer to this, I'll first. chip in, you know Game me. On. Dave Brown, heard Nico and Chris talking about darting icons. What did he make of RVB, RVB's comments regarding Littler saying he's, a, he's disrespectful and won't bother doing anything for him because he didn't respond to his texts? I haven't fully... Well, Nico's about left it. me on red for a while. <laughs> 59. That's a very strange turn of events, isn't it? It's been a very up and down week for Raymond. Well, he, he won a tournament which nobody predicted. And then One this comes hundred. about. It's It's been a very, very betwixt and between week. I'm not really sure what to make of it at all. No, I think it's, I think it's absolutely bizarre. He... he he does so much good and then spoils it by opening his mouth. Like, incredible at his age and where his career is to almost get himself a place in the match play and potentially turn his year around. The whole beautiful from Barstow. To then be worried about a 17-year-old lad answering your texts. All a bit weird. Another 161 for Croft. 136. Wow, that really was close. Ninety-three. He's looking for Joey the red light. He got the green one. But it's green light to 2 nil. Game shot. And Joe is 2 nil up. That's a little bit Joe better, Croft. isn't it? In 14 darts. If he keeps improving. Chaz Barstow might not even get a leg in this contest. Third now, Chaz to throw here's the thing game about this game. If Chaz wins it from this position, he will win this group. However, he has another route through 16. to the semis. He needs to win three legs. At the minute, that doesn't look particularly likely. 100. I think there's something that people forget as well, Mace. These dart players want Nine, and they five. try to win every single leg. It's not as if they're going up there on purpose to try and win three legs. If seven legs are played, they're trying to win 100. all seven. Yeah. Yep, they're co committed to... Every single leg. 59. They are invested. And the last thing you want to do is win your first game and still find your way to the exit door before the semis. Whoa! But that is a distinct possibility, the way that Joe Croft is starting to play. Now, he's finding himself in a decent 95. Joey mode of play. You're averaging in excess of 90. 81. That'll do very nicely. Yeah, tops after 12 on the Barstow throw. Sixty. Joey requires Double top for Croft. Game and this place the has been loud at times Joe tonight, Croft. but they're looking at the stage thinking that their worst nightmares could come true. Yeah, no Barstow, Fulford no Lipscomb. To throw first. Game on. I know he's called Crofty, but at the minute, he might as well call him the Heartbreak Kid. 96. And he's delivering sweet chin music to Barstow. Wasn't that Dean Allsop? Wasn't he called the Heartbreak Kid? I think he might have been, you know. Some, for some reason, that's... Brilliant. Derbyshire County player. Yeah. He's actually been doing some senior stuff, which is... He's not a senior. He is. He's, he's been in the pub. He's been in the pub to see me and he lives around the corner. Well, up the road. Well, Given my regards, I haven't seen Dean for years. Popped in. Didn't, didn't say he was coming in. He, he, he popped in to see me not that long ago. As did the governor, John Lowe. He popped in. That was 85. nice. 85. Got to get a move on, Chaz. 
Every leg you can win could be vital in getting through to the semi-finals. Neil Duff will start the last qualification match against Joe Croft with a leg difference of minus two. That's the so second time five. that's happened to Joe. Chaz started this game plus two. In a live sense, he's minus one. 45. I don't think he can stay there. However, the other way he can get through is if he loses to Croft, he then needs Croft to beat Neil Duff. Uh, one for you here. Paul, hi, Paul. It was great meeting you in... Oh, where's that place? It's in... In Barouri. Yeah. A few years ago, do you have any plans to come back to the northeast of Scotland for any exhibitions? Maybe. That's all I know at the minute, Andy. But it, it's always great to come back to Inverurie. I'd come back up there just to say hello to people, never mind just to play darts. Now, what have you got, Chaz? This could well be to just stay in Saturday night. It's not going to happen. Joe Croft, who is in his first Saturday night, Fifty-five. He's staring Joey at 41 for 4 nil Against someone who's been at the two Champions Weeks. Go what a great performance that is. Joe it's not a vintage Crow. one. However, if you look at the numbers of Barstow tonight, he did average 77 in his first game. Right there, only 72. So he's not brought his best tonight. He did get five darts at a double, but didn't hit any of them. And Joe Croft, just doing what he's done all week long, Plotted along at a mid-80s level, and it was good enough to get a 4-0 win there. So, he'll take on Neil Duff in the final qualifying match, but get your earplugs out again, everybody, because Lips comes back, and he's got a big mountain to climb against Scott Taylor. And so on we go, and the war continues to be magnified 
for Adam Lipscomb, but he's in a bit of trouble. He's going to have to win here against Scott Taylor, and he's going to have to win big if he is going to make his way through. And dare I say the scenario of a nine-dart shootout is still in play here as well. If Adam Lipscomb wins 4-1, that lot, they've all come to see him, and we're going to be watching a couple of extra darts this evening. Nine more, in matter of fact. It could happen. Or they could be going home disappointed. The defending champion in no mood to mess about. Paul Nicholson, Chris Mason. Well, there it is. A night that Adam has been waiting for for so long. But now it comes down to this game to see whether he makes the final four. If he doesn't win 4-0 or 4-1, he will fall at the group stage hurdle. Game on. If Scott Taylor gets two legs... He'll be in another semi-final, his third consecutive 60. Saturday semi-final in about five weeks. <laughs> Some return that. Uh, Mr. Nobody whatsoever. I forgot Paul Nicholson 100. was a WWE fan until I heard the Heartbreak Kid and Sweet Chin music reference. If you're reading this, Paul, who's your pick to win between 60. Cody and Roman? Cody Rhodes. There you go. You heard it here Story first. Story will be finished. And we all think that The Rock is going to turn on Roman Reigns. Kevin Pryor asks, will we see Bobby George at the seniors or here? He can barely walk. He's nearly 80 years of age, man. I think he's already had a new one new knee. I think his back's done. His feet are done. I don't think he's got any toes left. Scott Taylor takes this 140. One, Adam's going to have to win four consecutive legs. And Scott's got the luxury of laying up, and he doesn't want to bust it. Earlier in the week, he bust 180, and I think he's remembering it. He actually, because of a, the prior visit, for some reason, and a lot of players do it, they, they just keep a mental note of what they think they're on, and he... He thought he was on 2-2-1. Two, two, he definitely knows he's on tops here. Double five. 30. Oh, this is a big chance now. This could have been so much worse for Adam Lipscomb. 51 tops needed. Big ask. He's under so much pressure from the crowd. It must be really hard to shoulder this. 39. Scott, you're required 10. I'm sure there were scenarios that people were thinking about as they were getting their tickets ready to come here tonight. The worst possible no scenario to be required, was that Lipscomb and Barstow could lose out in the groups. Double top with one. Should have had two. Scott, you're required 10. Will he get another go? That's a safe one, Nico. On the first leg. And that's a good one. Scott Taylor. So far tonight on doubles, Taylor's been Ladies and gentlemen, okay. can we have all phones on silent, please? But it took leg, it's Scott, to throw Scott Taylor seven Game attempts on. to take that leg. And that now means that Adam must win the next four legs. Otherwise, it will be Taylor and Hein 41. in the semis. Uh, someone's saying here, we'd love to see the semis in the final best of nine and best of 11. Yeah, I, I'd like to see the semis in the finals extended a bit. I think best of seven for that kind of money is a little bit. I think we'd see better from the players as well. I think we'd see a high quali high, higher quality encounter. That's above our peer grade, isn't it? 45. It's a dark play. you just got to make your own look. Get to Saturday, do your best. It's like my brother always 63. used to tell me, in what other profession can you turn up and think about the worst case scenario being a certain amount of money, but the best case scenario where you could potentially up your earnings by maybe 10 times? That's a lucrative position to be in. Someone's saying they didn't realise Bobby was that old. Yeah, 79 on the 16th of December this year. I, I know this because it's... Uh, a day before my birthday, he was, he's on the 16th, I'm on the 17th. I'm not 79, fortunately. 
No, I feel like it currently. Now, what can Taylor do from 199? He can trim it down a little bit. 59. Require, but not by much. 16. This is the first step on the ladder. Double top. Nine That's been his six. miss on tops tonight. Just Got short. This is to eliminate Adam. What a lie that is. What a shot this could be. That Game is Adam Lipscomb gone. There. Scott Taylor. His dream has turned to a bit of a nightmare. And Scott Taylor You're is into the final four with first. Steve Hine from group Game one. On. Don't even question the fact as to whether he knows. He knows. Yep. The player is in the... Well, it's a, it's a wonderful area now that the players have to practice and rest and relax in. There's a couple of big screens in there, one showing the coverage you're seeing, and there's also a another one with a live table on, so they, they know. Scott wants to win this group now because he wants to have the darts in the first semi-final. You think about what Bradley Ruse did last week. He won Group A. He won Group 1. He won the night. It was the perfect week. Six. Taylor's looking to do exactly the same. And look how he's come on when you think about his, his first time around. Does anyone remember a player called Kevin McDine? Yeah, can he? He's still around. Although not in good health at the moment. Uh, Kevin's got some stuff going on at the minute. But we wish him well. 60. Uh, is Gary Anderson's shoulder injury serious? Don't know. Not spoke to him, so I don't speculate. 100. Time will tell. Look at this shoulder. Snapping into play. 140. Adam, Adam 140. needs 104 just to get a leg in this contest. This is a really intelligent step to the left. Just trying to open up that 48. first dart as more so of a barrier. 60. It didn't quite work out. Taylor's got tops. Game and that's another break of throw. Further. The Scott executioner Taylor. that is Scott Taylor. Or should we call him the dream crusher? Was it... What year was the first Grand Slam? 2007. 2007, yeah. Because we'll two qualifying places. Game Kevin McDiamond won one and I won the other. I had a lovely group. Nice and easy. Barnevel was in it, wasn't he? Yeah, Adrian Lewis and Dennis Priestley. 43. It's disgusting. Yeah, that's what I thought at the time. A bit like the situation for Adam, but does 45. he walk away from tonight and this week saying, I have made progress. Yeah, I think ultimately he has. I, he, this week he's looked a better hey, player more. in pretty much every session than he's than he's looked before and, and that's that's the positives he has to take from it. Well, he's got license to enjoy himself now. Get those shackles off, Adam. Open up the shoulders. Great camaraderie between the players. Even Scott enjoyed that one. I think we'll be getting into Luke Littler, Daryl Pilgrim territory here, where they both know their fate. 41. We've got one more quick one, Nico, before this match possibly comes to end. Best player to never win the world. I think we'll have one name between us. James Weird. Correct. Got to go bull here, Adam. You know it's the right thing to do. 55. That was not. 55. You do fear that Adam might only get three more darts tonight. I always found it really, really difficult to play darts when I was laughing. And when I was feeling 95. that serotonin hit mid-throw. Scott's got the red balloon shot now. 60. I think if you've got a very Scott relaxed throw, it's, it's easier because there's no... You don't want that intensity, do you? Double top. 
59. High and Harry wide. Maguire, Lipscomb wants a shot at that tops now. He doesn't get it, and he might walk away from Saturday night only winning the one 44. leg against Steve Hine, who doubled 40. extremely well against him. Game but Scott Shadow. Taylor will win Group 1, and he's Scott following Taylor. the path of Bradley Roos from last week. Unfortunately, Adam Lipscomb does not make the semi-finals on his first visit to Saturday night, but look at the support he's had. So, it hasn't been a night for Hampshire here in Portsmouth, because Lipscomb is gone. Is Chaz Barstow about to join him on the bench? Because now we look to the last game in qualifying as Joe Croft looks to win Group 2 at the expense of Neil Duff. Well, this crowd at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth have seen their hometown hero depart. Adam Lipscomb out of the competition, losing out to Scott Taylor before the break. So, Neil Duff is in action now, up against Joe Croft. He's hoping that he's going to be staying in contention as far as the semi-finals is concerned. Well, Joe Croft has pretty much the best suit as far as Group 2 is concerned. Well, let's head down to the comms and to Paul and Chris. Things are starting to thin out in the crowd, and you know why, because Henry's just told you why. However, the Chaz Barstow fans are now on the edges of their benches, because now they want Joe Croft to win badly. If Joe does not win this game, Barstow is gone as well, and it will be a nightmare night for Hampshire. Duff, who has had success on this stage in the last year, if he wants Game to have on. a tilt at another weekly crown, he just needs to beat Joe Croft. It's that simple. So Charles will be a, a Joe Croft fan for the next 10 or 12 minutes. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be the carpet around Chaz Barstow at the minute because that carpet's going to be full of fingernails. 140. It will be threadbare. 
54. I'm sure you've talked about this the last couple of days, but the technique of Croft, it looks great at the minute. But yeah. if he can really polish that technique over the oh, next few won. seasons, the product could be very, very good. Yeah, I said, I think the fundamentals are... Everything's there. It's it's straight down the middle of his eye line, so he's neither right or left eye dominant. The stance is on point. There's no head movement. There's no body movement. Everything comes from the elbow. The drawback and the acceleration is of similar speed. So, yeah, I think I think the fundamentals are there to work with. Absolutely. Watch this space. He does have one tendency, and that's to pull the odd dart left. If he can minimize that because I don't like the word eliminate if he can minimize it then his game will improve just by that one turn yeah without I'm not, not sure what your take is on this it, for me that would be one or two things an over grip or just a an engagement of the tricep it's it's one of the two I think it may even be just by that right elbow is slightly flaring kinked on the inside yeah it might just be by half a centimetre through a centimetre, and it might just be a, a, a slight positional change. That's it. Yeah, and you could, you, could, you could sort that out with maybe foot positioning or, or just going through some drills that will stop that elbow from... Because if the elbow's going in, you'll throw outside in, won't you, effectively? Yeah, Duff goes the other way. He's got the elbow on the outside. But he's got that one on the inside of double 19 to take a lead. A lead that maybe he shouldn't have taken. Second Croft missed Neil three darts a double. Game on. What we have to say at this point is that Croft is already through because when he won 4 0 against Barstow, he ensured that he was going to have exactly the same points as Chaz and a better leg difference no matter what happened in this game. So, one first Saturday night, first qualification to the semis. Well done, Joe. Ticking boxes. 22. Gradually. That's what he's all about. And I, I much prefer, prefer that than to see a player who doesn't have the knowledge or experience burst on the scene because they, they tend to struggle holding that position. I think the, the tune of Series 7 is one of players qualifying via Weekly Sense who have had promise and are making promises for the future. Reese Robinson... Connor Heenan, Bradley Ruse. Is that going to continue tonight? Or is it going to be a veteran that goes through? It was leveled at Duff earlier tonight that he's been getting better as the week has gone on. And that's a pattern that he follows pretty much every time he's here. Make no mistake, this race is approaching the last couple of furlongs and Neil Duff leg. is starting to sprint. Neil Duff. Uh, Yoren says Croft was so poor in his Jones doubles last game, there. wasn't he? Game no, on. far from it. Four from nine. Yeah, that'll do. Best doubling performance we've seen tonight from Hein in game three. Four hits from five. 80%. Yeah, you can see from our camera just above the board how Duff is left of the hockey as he looks at the board, 43. but also leans into the toe element of his right foot. So he's way left as he looks at it, but that's what suits him. It's what works. 100. It's like anything, isn't it? Cue actions, golf swings, as long as you can be repetitive with them, you can make them 45. work. Do you know any dark players that have won a world title who don't have a star on their shirt? That's become a thing, hasn't it? It has become a thing, yeah. I think the funniest thing I've seen when it came to the stars on shirts 59. was Trina Gulliver. She had so many stars, she just put one star and the number 10 next yeah. to it. <laughs> Bravo, yeah. Trina. Yeah, that was Bravo. Brilliant. Emmanuel has another question. 31. I may come into this equation. I don't know, Nico. Depends what kind of mood you're in, I suppose. Another exciting question. The best player to never win a PDC major. I would go with the trio of Terry 60. Jenkins, Mervyn King, Dave Chisnell. Can't decide between these two. Personally, 
I would just what have Dave Chisnell in front of, of Terry Jenkins. Yeah, Chisnell for me. He's won more than 20 PDC titles without having something of huge note. 41. Jerry requires Joe Croft 40. with a 171 to leave this. No will be stop. back, but still has not hit a double in this game from six attempts. Duff won't panic. 40. Whether it's double Joey start Maguire, or straight 40. start, this guy's got enough patience and poise. And stones. 20. Here we go, Nico. <laughs> Oh, I've asked you this personally anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, can I ask you, Paul, about the reasoning behind the sunglasses and your walk-on? I'm not sure. Joe, you require 20. What it ha so he, he doesn't know what it has anything to do with. I'll tell you in the next leg. No score. Now, regardless we require of the result in this game, these misses at double for Joe are going to infect the rest of his night. Correct. Oh, no. You've got to be kidding. Oh, Go that's cruelty from Neil man. Duff. Neil Merciless Duff. stuff from the Duff man. Just goes to show that you get well, no legs Neil for free anywhere you play in the world, especially in this kind of environment. That is huge from Duff. Now one more leg to qualify at the expense of Barstow. 60. The story behind the shades was I used to play darts for Northumberland. And when the Matrix came out, I thought those guys were really cool. So I started walking on with sunglasses and to Matrix-style music. I went to Australia soon after that. When I came back, I thought one thing that isn't different is the fact that I like to wear the sunglasses on the stage, and I kept it. Nothing wrong with being unique. Got to stand down. Didn't, didn't, didn't do you any arm pal, did it? Went on to win a, win a major. Had a wonderfully... Enjoyable rivalry oh, with the governor, Phil Taylor. Played in World Cups. Made a final. Nearly won it. Yeah, I've still got most of the sunglasses collection as well. <laughs> I should think so. You don't oh, like cheap things. Only two pairs of the sunglasses I've ever sold for charity. The first pair went to my friend Daniel Sim in Australia, who I played uh, Trans-Tasman Series with. And another set I let go for a charity, uh, which I... Raise money for every 100. Christmas. But the rest of them, I've got them all. Including some very interesting limited edition Oakleys with Australian flags on them, which are very hard to find. 100. Well, Joe has found it very hard to find doubles. He's had 12 darts at a double in this game and hasn't hit any of them. He might see the exact other side of the coin when it comes to group play here tonight. He started with a 4-0 victory against Barstow. If he doesn't get a move 59. on, he could see 4-0 from Duff. Um, a guy is talking about changes to throw grip. How easy or hard is it to make the changes feel natural? They become natural. They take time. Yeah. Have patience. Yeah, lots of it. It's a, it's a rocky road. Is it better to practice hey, on your own or against someone? Both. Now, it's not going to be a 1-3-4 out for Duff. But Joe will look at this 72 and say to himself, 35. all I want is to Joe hit a double to make myself feel a little bit better. Double 18. 54. 14 darts at a double and no hits. Neil, you require 99. Is he another one of those players at N Nico that needs jeopardy? I spoke about Neil Duff and he loves playing when there's something on it. And there's certainly something on this. Double 12. This is to be in the final four. 75. Can't get much closer. Joe, you require 18. Straight four, double nine. Mentally, he must be fraught at the minute. Double four. Ten. None. Now we require 16. 24. I think there have been padlocks on the doubles for Croft in this game. 
But you can't get enough of that wonderful Duff. And that's a 4-0 victory for Duff, which means he's through. He joins Croft into the semi-finals. Duff just can't believe his fortune at times in that match. However, that means that Duff wins the group as well as qualifies. And Barstow and Lipscomb are gone, creating a very hollow feeling here in Portsmouth. That is the end of qualifying. Next, it's the semi-finals. Fair to say, this lot have enjoyed their evening here at the Moda Super Series. Yes, the hometown favourite has departed and what an effort he has had. But what an intriguing night. The group stage has been completed here at the Moda Super Series. Chris Mason, Paul Nicholson are alongside me here on stage to talk all about it. First things first, look, they came here for two home favourites, Chaz Barstow, Adam Lipscomb to be successful tonight. And unfortunately, they're the two that are gone. Yeah, I don't think it could have gone any worse uh, for the hometown favourites, but it just goes to show that things are not taken for granted. These situations are hard. When you're up against great players on a Saturday night, you've got to perform, and if you don't, you will get found out. We saw that Scott Taylor particularly, he took the relaxed element into the way he played, and he looked very comfortable. Sometimes you wonder, and I don't know what Chris thinks of this, but when you know you're going to be up against a hometown favourite, how do you react to that? The way Scott Taylor played it was perfect. He let the guy who he was playing take all the pressure and he just sailed through to the next round. I've never seen Scott Taylor play with a smile on his face like he has done tonight. Yeah, listen, the, the, as a rule, the, the more experienced players love playing in front of a crowd and they have been fabulous and fair, which, uh, which you can see Steve Hines enjoyed it. All the players have enjoyed it, but... What could go wrong went wrong for Adam. And I did say at the start that sometimes it's a double-edged sword. In sometimes it'll work for you. Sometimes that added pressure is just a little bit too much. And remember, he's not used to anything playing any in any kind of environment like this. You could tell he was a little bit nervy at times this evening, couldn't you, Paul? I don't blame him. 
in order to be comfortable in these situations, you've got to go through them. But there's always going to be that time where you're going to have the first time. He'll have learned an awful lot about himself. And when his head hits the pillow tonight, I would implore him to spend 10 minutes thinking about how he felt in this situation so he can learn from it and move on. Just You boys have both been on big stages. You've both played in the biggest tournaments in the world. What is that first hit of a crowd like that like? Horrendous. I, I can remember my debut on television and it was just absolutely horrific. I, I could, could barely breathe. I couldn't see. I didn't know what I was meant to be doing. And just, it, just even the things, when are the breaks? And uh, when should I get to the venue? When should I eat? You know, they're, they're all things that you sort of take for granted as, a, as just, a, you know, your normal everyday guy who goes down the pub to play a bit of league darts. It's, it's, a, it's a completely different environment. The, 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 the nerves are totally different. The feeling in the practice room is totally different. Uh, and you, you, you know, you feel the expectation and the levels. Listen, I, went, I made my debut against Roland Scholten, uh, an already by then pretty established player. I think he was a, a European Cup champion, you know, a proper player. But I was expected to win. But um, yeah, it didn't happen. I never had a crowd chanting for me like that anywhere in the world. I never really had a home game anywhere. And that's not me getting my violin out. It's just a fact. But one time I played in Sydney at Luna Park and they were chanting my name. I thought, this feels a bit different. I'm not used to this. And you do feel pressure from that because you want to perform for yourself and you want to perform for the people who are cheering your name. That would have been hard tonight for Adam and for Chaz. Neither player played their best stuff tonight, but I implore them to learn from this and to move on and maybe get things to go their way in the future. But Nico, you were a heel. <laughs> you go to the pantomimes just to get cheered, don't you? <laughs> have they got any pantomimes in Portsmouth at Christmas time? I'll have to go. We'll put some tickets together. Right, let's talk about Group 2, and I want to talk about Neil Duff. The guy has got guts, unlike anything maybe we see from many other players. Had to win 4 nil, does the job, and even though he had to ride one or two storms, he never looked quaky one bit. No, he's granite, isn't he? That one five three was just right out of the top draw, and... We're in the context of the situation, having to get that scoreline, absolute granite and all credit to him. Listen, there's a reason why he's a world champion. Whichever way you want to look at it, what levels you want to dress it up in, he's a world champion and he showed why just, just in that moment of taking out that 153. And there was nearly some live lounge limage in here because he was threatening the first ever nine dart to here in front of a crowd. Yeah, we still haven't had one on a Saturday night, and this would have been the perfect night to get one. Let's face it, we always want the best from these players, and we want people to have their little slice of history. We've seen the likes of Steve West and Fallon Sherrick and Leonard Gates and Daryl Pilgrim have nine dart legs and great performances, but we're yet to get that little slice of history. We always want to keep the audience wanting more, but I just wonder who's going to be that first person to get that Saturday Night Nine, and that will live forever. The other player that got through that group was Joe Croft. Is he almost trying too hard at times to get everything right? Yeah, I think he's trying to convince himself that everything, you know, he, he's in control, but you, you just can't, you can prepare for situations like this, but you have to be in the moment. Like Nico said, it, 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 talent isn't everything when it comes to stage play your, your ability goes out the window it's it's all about what goes on between the ears and he knows more than most because he did it in, in, a, in a totally different environment as well um, he's still listen he's been around the sport his whole life but he's still brand new to things like this and I, I like the small increments he's making an improvement uh, and he is very much a sponge, loves to talk darts, loves to pick your brains on, on certain things, and he's work in progress. Um, but everything's there for him to become a, a serious player. I love what Chris said there, because you don't have to be the best player in the world to succeed on this stage. I wasn't even the best player in my county team, but I went on to do bits. You look at Kevin Painter, who I use as a yardstick for a lot of things in this sport. Is Kevin the best player? in the world. Has he been the best player in the world at any time? No, he hasn't. But what has he had? He's been wily, and he's used the grey matter between his ears 
to the best of their ability. When Kevin never plays darts ever again, he will say, I got everything out of my mind and everything out of my game. And that is what Joe needs to do over the next few seasons. He needs to work on that. Well, let's have a look at the results of tonight to paint the picture going forward later on this evening because these are our semi-finals. Scott Taylor up against Joe Croft and Neil Duff against Steve Hine. They're going to get underway in the next five minutes or so. Let's talk about semi-final number one, Taylor against Croft. There's a feeling there's two completely different people involved in this one. Scott Taylor, who's enjoying it. He's laughing. He's smiling on the stage. And as we mentioned a few moments ago, for Joe Croft, nothing's really coming easy for him. The first game he wins 4-0, he thinks, well, that was fairly simple, wasn't it? I took advantage of my opponent not playing particularly well. But what is going to be sitting rent-free in Joe Croft's mind right now is, I've just missed 16 darts at a double in a match, and I didn't hit one. He's got to get over that really, really quickly. If he doesn't, Scott Taylor will have him for dinner. Did Scott Taylor actually play the perfect game plan against Adam? Because the crowd were getting involved. Scott was getting involved in him in a good way, having a bit of interaction with Adam. Could that actually, because a lot of them have stayed here, be the perfect game plan? Because they might be on his side in this semi-final. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a game plan. It's experience, it's knowledge, it's understanding. Yeah, he, he's outside of Neil Duff, the most experienced player at the highest levels. Um, that allows him to play with an element of freedom. It's something that me and Paul always talk about in commentary. He's been here, he's done it, he's he done it four weeks ago. That allows you to play with freedom. There's no pressure on him. If he if he doesn't win it, his mindset is, well, it's all right, I won it four weeks ago, I won the, won the whole thing. You know, it, and that allows you to play with freedom. So we find on number two then, where we're going to see Steve Hine and Neil Duff in action. Two were experienced campaigners, but this is usually the point in the week, usually the point in the Saturday night, where we see the Neil Duff move. The direct opposite of what we've said about Joe Croft. Duff has gone from being defeated to someone who has really started to find some sort of range. Is it anywhere near the range that he wants? No. Was it good enough? Yes. But against Steve Hine, he's going to be up against it because Hine played some great darts in his first couple of matches. That's going to be a really interesting encounter. Which I think there's going to be a bit of a uh, bit of posturing in that one. Has Steve, to a certain extent, saved his best for Saturday night? Almost as if like having the crowd there just gave him a, a little bit of a buzz that maybe at times he didn't have in Group C. Yeah, I think I think he's maybe have that free rolling mentality. I don't I don't think I sort of earmarked him down for one of the players to have come out of that group and qualify for tonight. And I'm, I'm not. He may not of himself. You know, he's a. He, he, you know, he's a sensible guy to talk to. He'll, he'll tell you how he feels and, and what he thought about his chances. So he may be thinking, listen, uh, this is a bonus. I'm just going to go up and have a uh, and have a, have a a go. Right, pick your two. Who gets to the final? Well, Scott Taylor for me uh, to win the first one. And I'm going to go with Neil Duff, but only just. I think the second semi-final will be tighter. Yourself, Ace? Same. Well, these two firmly in agreement. Right, you've got to get through this swarm of people up to the commentary <laughs> box, so we better let you get going. Right, time for the semi-finals, and we kick start with the defending champion who is looking to get back through to Champions League and recapture the title and win the biggest jackpot we've got here as well in £25,000. He takes on Joe Croft, who could be two games away from his first appearance there. This is to eliminate Adam. What a lie that is. What a shot this could be. That Going is Adam Lipscomb gone. Against someone who's been at the two Champions Weeks. Going what a great performance that is. It's not a vintage ball. one. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. It is finals night, and it's time to introduce the semi-finalists. Would you please welcome to the stage, it's Crofty, Joe Croft, and from Bolton, Scott Taylor. Here we go then, Croft v Taylor for the first place in the final. Taylor, the defending champion, looking to get back to the big week. It'd be a hat-trick of appearances for him if he was able to do that. Up against Joe Croft, who is a 
ever-improving player, a man who is hoping to take that next giant leap in his career after a six months to remember. Played in his first UK Open earlier on this month. Is he going to round off the month with his first title in front of the cameras? So it was all jovial for Scott Taylor in the group stages, but the steely-eyed determination is there for him now. Can he make it through to the final? Let's find out in the company of your commentary team. It's Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Yeah, welcome to the semi-finals. And now it's Croft versus Taylor. Shades of 1993. But there's no blood on the carpet here. Favourite for this game, without a doubt, Scott Taylor, the Super Series 6 champion. The winner of Week 12 in Series 6. This is new territory for Croft. It is familiar territory for Taylor. Quite simply put, Croft must put right what went wrong in the last game we saw against Neil Duff. Yes, his doubling was his downfall. 16 shots at a double with no success. And like we said in the lead up to this game, Mace, if he can't forget that and move on, then you do fear for his chances. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And he's, he'll be, Crofty will be fully Scott aware here first. that Game on. he's got to find gears. This is territory that 100. Scott Taylor knows all too well. Back in Series 3, he won Week 4. 45. A few Series on, he'd like to be Week 4 champion again. No reason. Why not? The ability is there. The form line is there. And the history does. books it. It's there. And if he does win tonight, he'd become the second person to win week four twice. Colin Osborne 85. being the other one. And he's one of the Super Series legends. Because he's won more matches here than anybody. But has not won a series. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's certainly some I expected him to have done by now 40. with the success he's had in the qualifying tournaments. 140. Great approach from Taylor. There's a very peculiar atmosphere here in Portsmouth at the minute. One of heartbreak 55. and realism. Scott, you require 62. Plenty have stayed on to watch the action. So why 22. not? Where can you get three drinks for a tenner nowadays? And world-class darts to boot. Nearly a tenner for a pint at the Premier League in Nottingham last week. <laughs> I thought it would be more than that. 40. Double top. Getting further away. No score. Now, if Crofty is going to win this, 76. these little clutch finishes are a must. It's got to go 16 here. Oh, that one is way low. That one's so low. That it would have won a limbo contest. 44. It's Scott, you're required. Low, 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 low. <laughs> that one is not low, and that there. is a 1 0 lead for Taylor. Scott Taylor. Looking to do exactly what Bradley Ruse did last week. Second leg win, group A, win group one, Game on. win the week. Croft is now in the position that Adam Lipscomb was in a little bit earlier tonight. 40. New territory, learning about himself as every second ticks by. Adam still here, 42. supporting the rest of the players, like the Pied Piper, isn't he? Maybe when he leaves, so does everybody else. <laughs> You're trying to tell me if 40. Adam Lipscomb was in Shrek, he'd be the Pied Piper. Do you know what the Pied Piper played in that Shrek movie? What kind of music? I've never seen it. In, it would make surprise you. The Beastie Boys. Oh, I remember them. 100. 
Well, someone's got to be the beast tonight. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Duff? 85. Is it going to be Hein? Or is it going to be the two younger gentlemen from Group 1? Forty. Standard so far in this semi-final. It's a bit perplexing. There's an awful lot of edgy stuff being thrown tonight and some very unusual results. We've actually had three consecutive four nils, 45. which I can't remember on a Saturday night. No, you don't expect them, do you? It's the six best players over the course of a week. Whoever Safety. wins tonight, they've got a bit of a Joey wait for the Champions League. It's about two months away. But it's always nice to have something to look forward to. Yeah, it gives you something to prepare for and practice. Majora does not miss the single 16 this time. So Tops is left. Double 19. Game oh, and I'll make hurt. sure that Joe Second Croft is not even going to look Scott at tops this time. That will hurt. Third leg, it's Scott to throw first. See, now you've got to be merciless. Game on. You've got to forget about the two people who have been eliminated, and then you've just got to take out the people who are in front of you. Whoa, Scott knows all about naked. cashing the big check, but if he continues to cash big here this year, he's going to make his life back in Bolton a lot easier. It was like a left hook right on the money, followed by a body shot. One hundred and one from Bolton as well. Amir Khan's from Bolton. I was once in a clothes shop in Bolton. His entourage came into the shop and they shut the shop. Forty-one. I decided to leave. Someone asked, do we think if Adrian Lewis will return? If so, can he regain his old form? I'm not sure um, with what's going on in his 60. Scott private and personal life. Um, I think he's very happy doing what he's doing. Ticks over with a few exhibitions and enjoys his bit of fishing. I think he's quite happy. The door is never closed. Not when you've got that much ability. 83. <laughs> Scott, you require 40. Taylor for 3-0. And it should be 3-0. And Game it is 3-0. We could be on for a fourth Scott consecutive Taylor. bagel. It's like a deli in here. Kieran Ballard asks, Paul Hey, Chris and Paul, based on ability, first. who do you think Game the on. biggest underachiever there's ever been in darts? Wow, that is a really interesting question. 59. Yeah, I've met some great players that have just not had the opportunity or the finances. 58. Dave Richardson. Oh, that's a shout. Many people have told me that he had the ability to be a world champion, but just some things just wouldn't let him. Yeah, there was another lad called Scotty Coleman. He was He was unbelievable. 99. Joe Croft may leave Portsmouth with his head in his hands thinking, 56. how can you win 4-0 and lose 4-0 twice afterwards? Because that is a real possibility. 60. I expect to see a lot of him here this year. And he was talking to Henry earlier about making incremental improvements. He's already made one here this week. And if he was to lose this semi-final by a large margin, he must not forget that he has gone in a positive way this week. However, he has got tops. Yeah, it's, a, it's an upward trajectory and curve, isn't it? And if, you know, when you're doing your apprenticeship, which effectively... That's what he's doing. I think this is perfect. Just getting a, a week at a time down here. Starting on the Nine, Monday would be six. perfect for Joey him. Joey Maguire, 20. Double 10. Hasn't hit a double in a while. And still hasn't. It's almost like he's no allergic score. to them at the minute. Scotty Somebody Maguire, give that man an antihistamine. 
Maybe stick one on the double in it, edit. Chris, do you or Nico have any plans to get back on the darts at some point? Uh, I don't. I don't, but I'm sure. 23. Nico being. Joey require 20. Annoyingly young. May make a return Game at some point. Four you Croft. can see the ironic smile of Crofty there. One of saying, I've hit a double. However, look at the big Scott picture. He's still in the semi final and he had plenty of time to get that double. If Scott Taylor decelerates here, Joe's just got to stick five. around and take his chances. Well, Scott Taylor's only averaging 80. You, you find. I don't know if. Joe Croft can Im improve sort of 10 or 12 percent. That may be enough to, to, to run through these legs. 60. Just on that question from our YouTube chat box. I'm like Christmas wine at the minute. I'm still mulling. 100. I don't even like Christmas mulled wine. Anything with cinnamon. Oh, that's grim. One hundred. That'll do. Half dart lead. But Croft is very much still in this match. If he can just keep his foot on the pedal. Hey, it's a great last dart. How that went in there, I think only he knows, and possibly Luke Humphreys, because he's the master at hitting that shot. I know it's just. Well, he's a, he is the master at the moment, isn't he? That display on Thursday night was just pff, remarkable. I just like the fact that we're not having that conversation of who's the best dart player in the world at the minute. But who is the best dart player in Portsmouth? Double 13. A match dart missed and by Joey some distance. 97. Is the game still alive? It might not be. Taylor hasn't been brilliant on the doubles in this match. He's three from 11. As long as he gets a fourth, he won't care. This is for his third consecutive final on a Saturday night. Double four. Five. Joey requires. Joe is still alive. How? We aren't sure. I know how. Game Scott Sean Taylor has missed Fifth 10 left. darts of the double. Croft. Crofty with the break is within one of levelling. Could this Jones night get any first. weirder? Game on. I'm not sure how. We have not had one 4 3 scoreline this evening. Are we about to get off first? 100. This is not a good time to hit the wall. 121. One of my concerns, Miss, coming into tonight, was looking back at Series 6. Taylor said that his tank was One empty at certain points of that two-week spell. As we get our first 180 in this match from Croft. But I think him constantly playing every day was a good thing. Having two days off, I wondered whether that was a detriment to Taylor. Yeah, I agree. For some players, it's not suited. I mean, we've seen it many, many times where a player has been prolific in Group A, returned on the Saturday and just not, not got going at all. 71 left to take us all away. To deny Scott Taylor another chance for the match. Stay in that region. Yeah, 53 left. He's got a bit of flight in the way if he pulls it, so... I wouldn't even blame him if he went Could, 17 here. Yep. 41. That's what Scott we were talking about. However, this is for the match. 100. Both on tops. Joey one to save it. 40. One to win it. This is the first door. Double 10. He was muttering 30. to himself as he went for those 10s and the game... Could Scott be done now. 40. And the Go game is done because Taylor, who won Group A this week Scott and won Taylor. Group 1, is in the final. And he's going to take on either Neil Duff or it could be, indeed, Steve Hine. So Taylor's done his job. Was it good? Well, I'll leave it up to you to judge him.
but he's played nowhere near his best tonight, but he's still in the final. That's what we've seen, and Joe Croft, who's made his way to his first semi-final, falls at the first attempt. When we come back, it is that second semi. Well, Scott Taylor is showing exactly why he is the champion here at the Moda Super Series. Running into a lead, Joe Croft comes back at him, but staves off the comeback to return to the jackpot match. Right, next up in action for us is our second semi-final. It sees Steve Hine, the Muffin Man, in action, looking to make it through to his first Champions League, a place where Neil Duff has seen and experienced a few times before. He's just on a winning trail here at the Motors Live Lounge. In fact, he could be on for a third consecutive weekly win in his last three appearances here across all competitions. Seconds out, round two in the semi-finals. I think there have been padlocks on the doubles for Croft in this game. But you can't get enough of that wonderful Duff. And that's a 4 0 victory for Duff. Double top for the Muffin Man. And his doubling performance has got him through. Amazingly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Motor Super Series. Here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. It is finals night and it's time to introduce the semi-finalists. Would you please welcome to the stage. It's the Duff Man, Neil Duff. And the Muffin Man, Steve Hyde. The Duff Man and the Muffin Man, that sounded like one of my Saturday nights in during lockdown. But this is a semi-final at the Modus Super Series. The winner will face the champ, Scott Taylor, 
in the final. It's Duff, it's Hein for the right to take on Taylor with Chris and Paul. We've still got two previous weekly winners left and one series winner left. The Duff man would love to have a heavyweight clash against Taylor in tonight's final. But the Muffin Man has been ripping up the script here tonight because everybody thought it was going to be Adam Lipscomb going through with Taylor in Group 1. It just so happened that Hein spoiled the party. He didn't bring the cake or the muffins. And he played very, very well in his two games, averaging over 90. But if there's one thing these two have got in common, Mace, it's that they are both 50% on doubles for the night. Six hits from 12 apiece. Yep, and more often than not, Nico, that's the key to victory, isn't it? As Bobby George, George coined Fair the phrase, scores for show, doubles for Dow. Game on! Both players who stand on the left-hand side of the hockey, it means that they will get ultimate clearance when they walk back from the board. 60. Players like that. Now you can see Hein all the way to the left means that when Duff comes back, he doesn't got to worry about bumping into Steve or anything like that. There's a nice bit of stagecraft about this match. It's all about best of seven to play against Taylor tonight. But is it fair of us to say that Taylor has 40. played nowhere near his best but has still made the final match? Yeah, totally agree. Well, if, if Steve Hein and Steve and Bunting were playing, 57. they could play at the same time because they're either side of the hockey. Well, there's a thing we haven't done on our YouTube channel yet. Two players playing at the same time, fighting for the trebles. Don't give them any ideas, pal. 60. That's not what was on my memo. Online darts, evening, Mace and Nico. Evening. 134. I presume it would be Phil, because he's only out doing half a shift, isn't he? And half a day's work for him at the World Seniors. Looked a fabulous day. Did you see any 60. of it today, Nico? Well, a lot of it was close, wasn't it? Yeah. That, that Adams game against Taylor. Ah, oh, remarkable. The atmosphere looked incredible there. It 96. was absolutely jumping. Blackpool and darts go together like raspberries and cream. 125. I was going to say, apple sauce and pork. How about this? 70. Almost like muffins and chocolate now chips, that one. 156. Oh, it's another big one. That 153 could well be the most important shot of the night. Well, it really was a duff duff. 94. Steve, you require 40. Double top. Well, it's not blocking it, that's for sure. 30. He's got every right to feel that way. That first start was so high 62. and so far away that it was cancerous to his efforts and his confidence for the next two. Well, Neil, what have you done here? That would have been a bit dirty, Dan. Steve, you require 10. Double five. An edgy start to this one. No How score. ironic that he got double five with the Maybe last start. 28. Double 14. Now double seven. What's going on on the stage tonight? The Pressure. Nerds. Pressure. 21. Who wants it? Stage this is still for a break 10. of throw. Well, Murph half a shift is in the five. chat. Hope you're not too tired, pal. Seven. Soldiering on here. Double two for the Duff Man. Three. Sometimes Steve, we're just lost for words. Well, we were oh, waxing, and go like this. waxing lyrically about their finishing. Neither of them could finish their dinner One. at the moment. With a speed. Now we require four. Double two. There Game we go. On the first leg. And that is Nailed a vital up. hold of throw for the man who got the right to throw first by winning group two. Second leg, it's Steve to throw first. 
It's one of those phrases that sounds really good in certain 86. accents. Maybe Geordie, maybe Liverpudlian. By hook or by crook, he won that first leg. Yeah. I think it's best in hook. Yeah, it, I think it's better in Liverpudlian, actually. Uh, guys, do you remember the world pairs? Jamie Harvey and Keith Denner, Bonnie Bonnie Banks of Loch Lomond on entrance, the Halicon days of darts. Bring it back. I do remember it because uh, I lost in the final to Phil Taylor. Me and Steve were all lost to Phil Taylor and Bob Anderson. 18-15. Oh, that hurt. 100 Good switching there from Hine. Almost halving his score. As the atmosphere here in Portsmouth just starts to settle down after the furor of earlier. 100. Steve Rock, 144. I don't think Hine is thinking too much about the previous leg now. He's thinking about double 12. 120. Oh, that would have been ultimate darting irony had that popped in. He doesn't want to be in dual Croft territory here. Kieran asked, David do we think Barneveld underachieved in the PDC? Absolutely not. Nope. Game shot next question, next leg, 1-1. One, one. That is now one hit from 14, so he's not in dual Croft territory. Who missed 16 darts at a double against Neil Duff. Is it fair to say that in the last two games that Duff has been involved in, he's I leading a bit of a one. charmed existence here. He's seen 30 darts at a double in six legs from his opponents. 89. And only one has been hit. A charmed life indeed. It was St. Patrick's Day this week, wasn't it? Yeah, last Sunday. 123. Yeah, Barneveld, a world champion in the PDC, a match play runner-up, a Grand Prix runner-up twice, a UK Open champion twice, a Grand Slam winner, a world Premier League one. winner, a Desert Classic winner. 59. Uh, no. Yeah, world number one as well. Yeah. World Cup of Darts champion. Many times. No. Uh, four. <laughs> and not finished. Someone's got to take this game One by the scruff of the hundred. neck. Steve Hine has not made a final in a weekly One campaign yet. Hundred. Well, the muffs making Nearly it rough for Duff. It's a great last start. Steve Leaves him on top. Hine looking for a little bit of champagne. 52. Champagne and muffins? We require Not something you would put together. Not traditionally, anyway. Game but look at that. Lots there. of missed darts at double Nailed in this match. Up. Well, that one's a beauty. Do you know that Duffman in The Simpsons well, was, he used to moonlight first. from the fact that he was Duffman, the celebrated 85. poster boy of the beer brand. He used to have another job. Go on. He was an exotic dancer. <laughs> and he used to earn... How do you know this stuff, Nico? And he earned 50 bucks an hour. Oh, yeah. 57. Does Paul regret doing the CM Punk walk-on? Never. His, why would he? Not the a chance. you remember it for remember him for it, it worked. It was 13 years ago as well, and you One still remember hundred. it. Game set in the match. <laughs> asset. The asset. Hey, T3. Well, how has Hein found that? They are big, bulbous, heavy darts. And he's also got those add-on weights on the top of the barrel, which make them a little bit heavier One still. But that's just better still from Duff, who is... Great timing. Putting himself in line here for that... Heavyweight 41. week four final now against Scott Taylor, if he can keep going like this. Another. That's okay. Because he's 96. left tops again, which he hit perfectly the last time he was there. 
41. Now we require... It was Hein that had played better coming into the semi-finals statistically. However, the experience at this stage seems to be paying dividends. No score. At the minute. Is that the right thing to do for Duff? I think so. 41. Yeah, I understand your question, Kieran, now but we require winning world championships is hard. Just ask MVG, one of the most four, celebrated then. players of the... Nail Duff. Well, of darting history in the modern era, and he hasn't won one in five years. Berg is nil to throw first. Yeah. Game on. 2019? 2019 was Michael Van Gerwen's last yeah. championship. He's been in a couple of finals since then. Lost in the 2020 and 20... 140. Uh, 2020 to Peter Wright. 2023 to Michael Smith. Kids should be in bed at this time of night. 100. Um... Paul and Chris, you were both great heel dart players, which made people watch. Paul will know that wrestling. I understand what a heel is. I called him on stage earlier. Are players too nice to each other now, and why do you think that is? Sometimes 96. they are. But on other occasions, they're not friends at all. Just look at Luke Littler and Ricardo Pietrecco. Go and have a look at the historical DRA fines for the last year. 83. Christmas party already paid for this year. 178 for Duffman to be in another final. 83. Remember the early part of his Super Series career where he just couldn't win? But he kept making finals, didn't he? And he keeps making finals still. 138. Weekly finals do not get any more heavyweight. Than Duff versus Taylor. Nearly and required. he's only one dart away from making it so. One left. 20. Not yet. Steve, you require 130. This would be some saver. Ironically, Kevin, the first major in the PDC that MVG1 was set like. Double 10. Go there it is. The Duffman is match. back in another final. Nailed he loves making the championship game in a weekly sense here in Portsmouth, but so does his opponent. This is about as big a final as we could possibly wish for in week four. And Steve Hine just didn't show up in that game like he did in previous matches here tonight. Neil Duff with another 79 average like he did in the group stage. However, he's going to be in the final match tonight against Scott Taylor, and it's not far away.
Well, welcome back to the Moda Super Series where the final is set. And what a final we have. Scott Taylor up against Neil Duff. Now, they're actually a first here because Chris Mason is popular in the crowd. Who would have thought there'd ever been a day where something like that would happen? They, they must have mistaken me for somebody else. <laughs> they must have been reading the chat room fam this week, yeah, eh? Anyway, probably. let's talk about the semi-finals. That's what we're here to talk about. We'll begin with the first one. Scott Taylor, Paul, a player who dug in when it mattered most. Joe Croft came back at him, but he just had that extra little bit, didn't he? Yeah, maybe a little bit of experience. I'll give Joe Croft an awful lot of credit because he really was up against it. He came back into the game, but vital misses at double. And I implore him when he leaves here tonight and thinks about this week, He's just got to put those moments right, incrementally, over the next few months, find a way to hit those key doubles just a bit more clinically, because in the last two matches he played tonight, he just looked a little bit off the pace. Yeah, Nico called it early on in the, in the, Duff, in the Duff defeat. He said the doubles will become infectious and probably roll into the next game, and that's exactly what happens. So that was the first semi-final. Semi-final two, Neil Duff. We kind of said this at the beginning of the night. He could be the type of player. He survived his scare, and that looked a lot more routine in that semi-final. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I think we, we've got to look at the numbers, and sometimes looking at the numbers tells a slightly different story, but what they're telling us tonight is that people just haven't played very well on the doubles against Neil tonight. He's taken all of his opportunities. He was up against it in Group 2, the fact that he came out of Group 2 with one win and winning the group, he'll think, I'm not really sure how that happened. But then, you look at his last two matches played, you've got Hein and you've got Croft missing an inordinate amount of darts at double. So he's led his charmed life. Now he's got to run with what he's got, which is one match, and you just get the feeling that Scott's not going to do that against him. Did Steve recover from that first leg? No. No, he didn't. He just psychologically you can see him in it and again it just it rolls over and that's another element to the sport which people don't really think about you stood there and although you're in you could be halfway through the next leg and you're still consciously thinking why did I miss why have I, I messed up that opportunity but for Neil Dove he'll almost feel like he's free rolling you know he prior to that 153 going in a, a double goes in before it you know, he's, he's potentially out. Well, it's a heavyweight final. It's Taylor against Duff. We're going to preview that in a couple of seconds' time. But first, next week's players, because it's a lineup filled with big names. So, Group A sees Connor Scott, Leonard Gates, Mike Warburton, and Andreas Harrison enter the fray. Now, Leonard Gates' ball has lost in the Champion of Champions event in Blackpool today. What does that do to him? Does that either give him an extra bit of fire in the belly or could that see him coming maybe a little bit with a tail between the legs? Judging by the way that Leonard has been talking to us in, in previous seasons, he'll just sweep it under the carpet, come here and want to do better than he's done here before. He's got a nine dart leg, obviously. He's had some pretty decent campaigns, but don't think just because he's got the big reputation that he's going to waltz his way through the first three days of next week. There are people like Andreas Harrison, who I, I really don't like this phrase at the minute because it's used too many times, under the radar, but Andreas Harrison is not under the radar at the minute. After what he did in Belgium with Gary Anderson, very recently setting a Swedish record on the European Tour for an average as well in his first round match, he, for me, is the favourite to win that group. Is he the favourite to win the week, though, as well? Harrison, in your mind? No. No, not looking at that line. I think he's going to go very close. I wouldn't be shocked if he win it. Uh, I am had a look at the. I'm not sure if he's been priced up, but I would be surprised with that field if he, he is favourite. I think they're they're going to be scratching their heads before pricing that one up. I think it'd be interesting to see how Burgoyne goes. Um, I'm fascinated by Connor Scott's return mm. to see what he's going to do. Obviously, he played in the double trouble week and he was at his most. Uh, flamboyant best at times but I think he will come back to this with a bit more of a bit more of a serious head on he will be he'll be he'll be out to win it next week but whoever wins it deserves every penny of that prize money and we're also approaching and, and based on the previous six series we're approaching the part of a series where we get more winners yes nobody has ever won a series from week four for example but our winners seem to come from five six onwards so when we get towards week eight and 
towards week 12, we're more likely to get a winner from them based on previous behaviours. So that's Monday, 9.30 a.m. on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. Why? Right, the final is almost upon us. It's Scott Taylor up against Neil Duff, and this really is a heavyweight contest as far as the Super Series is concerned. I think there were plenty of people at the start of this week who thought that maybe this could be the final. You think about what they've done in their previous finals here. They're going to think this is just another thing that I'm going to do on my roller coaster of Super Series action. Taylor is looking to win again for, what is it, the third time in six weeks. Duff has won a specials week very recently, a double start, and he's got the knack of winning these finals after having a period where he didn't. I think it's a fascinating one. Is there something to be said about finals like this when you've got two perennial winners, bona fide winners, that know what it's like to win on this stage in particular going toe-to-toe? -to -toe? That's why they're in the final again. You know, they're both playing a B minus level for them. Um, and I'm sure they, they wouldn't disagree. They're, neither are anywhere near their best, but they're finding a way to win. And, you know, yes, we like to see big averages and everything else, but where, when two players are not quite their best, it just adds tension. It's what sport's all about. And it's going to be down to the finest moments who, who goes on to win this game because Neil Duff's not going to walk up here and get his belly tickled by Scott Taylor, that's for sure. Is there a clear favourite in your mind? No, I don't think so. A lot of people might think that Scott Taylor's the favourite because he won Group A. He somewhat sauntered to winning his group tonight uh, before the semi-finals. But exactly what Mesa just said, Duff is the kind of opponent that you don't really want in a final. Mm. Someone who is very hard to shift. And this might be one of the hardest finals that Scott Taylor's had. And he's had some great opponents in finals, including the likes of Andy Bolton. And just finally, this crowd, they've stuck around. Even though the local guys have gone home, they've sung your name. They've even sung Owen Binks's name. They've enjoyed the action that much. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great to see. And I, I actually, I, I'm baffled because darts is massive right now. And I don't think there's an, another venue where you can come in, you know, for, for what, I mean, it's two pound booking yeah. fee for a ticket. It, it's, it's open to everybody. The, the players are accessible. And it's a great fun night out. It's a real cheap night out in a, in a beautiful old building. And, um, yeah, fair play to them. They, they've stuck around. The experts said everybody would leave. Well, what we have got and what they've got is a very yeah. good final. Mace, thank you for your company. Paul, thank you for your company. Let you head up to the culture box to describe all the action. So finals don't often end up like this. Two champions going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Neil Duff's won a lakeside. He's won multiple weeks here. He's won the double trouble week. He takes on Scott Taylor, the defending champion of this particular title. You could say the two winners of the two biggest prizes here currently at the Super Series are going toe-to-toe -to -toe in this final. It is guaranteed to be a mouth-watering occasion. So strap yourselves in because this could be fireworks. And the game is done because Taylor, who won Group A this week and won Group 1, is in the final. There it is, the Duffman is back in another final. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. It is time to meet the finalists. Would you please welcome to the stage from Bolton, it's Scott Taylor! And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Duffman, Neil Duff!
Here we go then. It's a heavyweight final in week four. These two were in action from the very first day and one of these two is going to throw the very last dart. Scott Taylor actually threw the first dart on Monday morning. He's hoping to throw the last. He takes on Neil Duff in the finale to join Robinson, Ruse and Heenahan in Champions Week in the company of Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Here we go then. Two players adorned in black and red. 32-year-old from Bolton, who is getting a bit of a knack for winning on this stage in 2024. But then again, so has Duffman. Finals don't get much better than this when you consider what they've done before. And Scott Taylor is looking to win week four again, like he did in series three. Duffman too has won early in a series but he really, Perfect. really wants to be in Champions Week so he can actually play in Champions Week this time because he couldn't when Taylor was here a few weeks ago because he was at the World Seniors Championship. Yeah, had to make the call. 99. And rightly so, opted to play in the World Seniors. But I'm just looking over the, 60. the matches tonight and in each phase... Scott Taylor had superior numbers. 140. Whether it be in the first group game, the second group game, and in the semi final. But as we know, 81. in these one match scenarios, especially finals for all the marbles, 58. anything can happen. One hundred and forty. Sixty. Uh, Ego chip asking about bouncers. Um, by by law, you've got to have sixty security Scott, over a certain number of people. It's the licensing laws. But someone's got to be the cooler. Now <laughs> Who's going to be the cooler in this one? Have you seen that new Roadhouse movie, Nicole? Yeah, I saw it yesterday. Is it as bad as I've been told? There's only one bad 60. thing about it. Conor McGregor. Scott, you're yep. 84. The rest of it is acceptable for a remake. And make no mistake, this game is not a 60. remake. Now we it's an original, 100. but it's more than a sequel. Double top for Duff. Game shown the first. That end. follows the script, Nailed at least up. the one that he's reading. Yeah, first blood to Duff. Is there a moment where a dark player knows he can no longer compete first. at the highest level anymore? Game Is it a physical or a mental thing? Uh, a little bit physical, mostly mental. Mostly mental. One hundred and four. Some players retire in their early thirties. Some players are still competitive in the early sixties. Fifty-seven. Everybody's different. And that's why darts is so interesting because everybody's got a different journey. One. Think about some of the finals and the games that Scott Taylor's had here on a Saturday night before. He's been blitzed by Littler. He has destroyed Andy Bolton himself. He's written his own script and done some tremendous things for him. All of those things previously, they mean next to nothing right now. Yeah, that was exactly his attitude when we spoke to him. Now we require 121. Somebody's kicking into gear. And his name Game is Neil Duff. That's what he does. Backs up the tum finish with a 1-2-1. One, one, averaging 103.66. What a start to the Scott final to this is. First. Game on. When all the chips are on the line, you've got to read your hand and play it to the best of your ability. It's that simple. Because Duff, who averaged 87 in a loss to Barstow in game two, we all thought that maybe it wasn't going to be his night. Then, 
He got a slice of fortune, which is about the oh, size of five. half a cake. I think he had the whole cake. Uh, Dave Brown, how important is practice to a darts player? Often do you go to practice in Fifth your pomp, five. or is it just a case of no matter how much you practice, no guarantee will give you results? Well, if you do anything and you practice, you'll improve. It Four, just five. depends where your ceiling is in terms of improvement and ability. Well, do you think a violinist who's got a diploma in playing the violin just sits and says, well, I've got, a, I've got a diploma, I can just play anything I want. When they get a new piece of music or an older piece of music, they practice it to make it note perfect. We can't be note perfect in darts. 57. But you must practice to continue to be sharp. It's as simple as that. It must have structure. It's absolutely everything. Six. It's a bit like a, a, a marathon runner. He doesn't just run a marathon. There'll be um, strength modules to his training and distance training. And it's, darts is no different to any other sport. And fail to prepare prepare to fail as I found out recently <laughs> 58 and it's also the type of practice like a sprinter wouldn't do a marathon runner's training 100 a boxer wouldn't Scotty do Rick a Roy, 130. bodybuilder's training it's just horses for courses well most dart players would practice this finish Second time tonight that Taylor's been close to a bullseye checkout. And because he's missed, he gives Duff a chance for 3-0. Uh, just to let you know, Tom, BFC. I could well, elaborate on what that may stand for. 82. Um, it's got a player is only allowed two, appearance, two appearances per 12-week period. One of those 13. can be a week. The other one can only be a Group B or Group C. Now but we that clears that up 32. for you. Double 16. And Game Duff is one leg away there. from blitzing this final. Nailed just up. won't be denied. He's played like this. He's just slowly but steadily got better and well, better and then just reached Game this on. mode of immovable object. 81. Jack thinks Connor Scott to win it next week. I think he has. Every chance. He's certainly on the short list and in the mix. Yes, they are playing for money. A substantial sum of money. 59. One hundred. Oh, Scott Taylor has to be perfect from here. A maximum of four legs to be played. Potentially... He has to win them all. 100. 60. 100. Uh, it's actually a, a digital scoreboard. It's a, a great big monitor, 60. and it's basically that, a, a digital scoreboard. Sometimes has a bit of a mind of its own. One hundred and thirty five. Eighty six. Just missing Scott the ball to leave. One hundred and forty eight. Potentially at least a two door two darter had he found a twenty five. 140. Now we require 115. Well, he's left double four just in case. 99. Can the Scott champ eight. peg one back? Oh dear. Oh, he left it late. An ironic Taylor. celebration from Scott Taylor. Fifth leg, it's Scott to throw first. Game on. Yes, Kieran, it's been a it's been an entertaining week, that's for sure. A mixture of sixty experience and new players. Always good. Sixty-nine. 
60. Fifty-seven. Neil Duff would love to find the first max of this final. Doesn't particularly like the lie, but finds the open 40. part of the treble. One hundred eighty. Oh. It isn't Duff that finds the max. It's the man, Scott Taylor. One hundred and forty. Oh, what a reply and back to back one forties for Neil Duff. Fifty eight. Now you require one hundred and sixty one. Eighty five. Scott, you require one hundred and forty six. This may be. His last turn. 122. Uh, now he requires 76. Mantle as the champion. Zweek champion could be coming to an end. And yes! it is as Neil Shut Duff with a and beautiful 76 Super finish champion! takes week four Neil of Neil! series seven. And he wins it with a 93-34 average, the second highest average of the night. Highest average of the night was from Steve Hine, 93-35. 11 scores of a ton or more, but look at the finishing. It was something we said just prior to the final. Scores for show, doubles for Doe, and his doubling was immaculate 100% including that beautiful 1-2-1 finish which was the start of the end for Scott Taylor his reign as champion lasted only four weeks well let's catch up with the champion he's on stage Neil Duff thanks Mace yes week four is in the books and this is becoming a bit of a habit isn't it Neil you won yeah. double trouble week and you've got the knack of winning these finals after what was a difficult thing to do at the start of your Super Series career. Yeah, th it's three months in a row now I've been down here and I've won. Um, uh, January, I've I, I done it the easy way, win group A and then back on Saturday night, but um, felt like I struggled all night. Didn't play anywhere near my best darts, but yeah, cream comes to the top. Sometimes you've got to win a different way. When you were playing Joe Croft earlier, he was missing darts at double, which seemed to be very key in you making the semi-finals. Yeah, but the thing is, I can't hit them for him. I have to take advantage when he does miss. Um, I think you were, you were at the lakeside side whenever Jim McEwen the, the game. Um, I, I still have a, the responsibility of, of taking charge of the game, which I think I, I kind of done, I done well. The one five three was. Awesome, and I, I don't think I had a treble in that, in that leg, but l listen, you have to take the chances when they're given to you. If you don't, you're going to lose. I've got to ask you about that 153 because that really has been the catalyst for you possibly winning the whole night. How did it make you feel when that double 18 went in? Yeah, I, I, I'm absolutely mesmerized. You know, like I say, I, I, I wasn't scoring, I, I couldn't physically have put three darts in the 20, and then to, 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 to run off the, the, the 153 was just. Yeah, from absolutely nowhere, but um, yeah, I think I needed it to push on the rest of the night. It's been quite an interesting atmosphere here in Portsmouth tonight. You've been with us pretty much since the beginning when we came here in September of 2022. What has tonight been like as a player, just to tell our fans about it? Yeah, it's been, it's, I love it down here. It's a different kind of atmosphere. Um, yeah, it's, it's been mad in the night because Adam and Chaz, local guys, very, very good friends of mine, so the, the crowd's been very respectful. Um, but yeah, outside of the PDC, you're not going to get much better than this place. I'd have to agree with you, the way they're singing Adam <laughs> Lipscomb's name at the minute, but you're the last man standing, and indeed tonight, there were two countries represented, five English players, one Northern Irishman, and you're the last person standing. How does that feel? Yeah, I, I would take that every day. I would take that any day of the week, you know. Um, the, the, 
most people, the, the guys are here, yourself and, and Mace, and that, they know my game. Mace has said it right from day one. I think he tipped me and, and Scott to be in the final. Um, I'm going to get better and better as the week goes on. I, I didn't play my best tonight, but I did what I had to do when, when I needed to. Um, I kind of, the, the very first match, I mean, when I went seven into the nine, I had adrenaline for two legs. I just I couldn't get them going again. Um, yeah, and, and Chaz played really well, but they're all a good bunch of lads, and, and that's why I love coming here. Unfortunately, you couldn't play in Champions Week in the previous series because of other commitments like the World Series. But at the end of May, we're definitely going to see you, aren't we? Absolutely, yeah, 100% over there. I'm, I'm not missing another one. Yeah, uh, that's, the, that's the big tick box there. That's the one that's on the bucket list. It took me long enough to get a win here on the stage. Um, I think it was six finals or something before I actually got over the line. Now I'm four deep. Um, I'm a bit of a veteran of, of, of the Motor Super Series, so yeah, um, I, I hope to be here. I'll be here in Champions Week and I will make a count for myself. Well, that's great to hear. I'm going to take that microphone away from you. You've worked hard this week. Congratulations, because week number four belongs to you. Everybody, week number four belongs to the Duff Man, Neil Duff! He likes a trophy or two these days, don't he, Neil Duff? is prolific now than he was two years ago when he went on to lift a world championship title. A star on the back for that. Well, if he had a star for every single Super Series week, he'd have to paint in a brand new shirt. Well, he's cool, he's calm, he's collected. He's everything that uh, you'd expect from a great champion. And that is exactly what Neil Duff is now here at the Super Series. Yeah, he's got it down to a fine art. He doesn't, he doesn't sort of leave uh, all the juice on the beach, so to speak, in terms of preparing for the week. See, he comes in very relaxed, uses Group A to get his game up to speed and then just builds. Well, a victory then for Neil Duff in that final. And the fact that he's backed it up and he said he wanted to win a Champions Week kit. What would he say if he won the Specials Week and then would be, go on and be successful? Well, he's three from three in finals. He couldn't play in Champions Week because of his commitments to the World Seniors. So. Um, and listen, who's saying he can't win the Champions Week? He's, he's, he's won everything else. He's, he's, he's back to back to back, isn't he, in terms of, of, of weekly titles? He won the special week. Fair play to him. He's, um, yeah, he's, he's the man to beat you right now. Well, an intriguing day then in, in terms of, well, in terms of everything, it, it was all built up to be about the hometown hero, Adam Lipscomb, wasn't it? Him and Chaz Barstow were eliminated in the group stage worth of action um, uh, earlier on this evening. Then we got to the semi-final stages and then we had some real tension in the air, didn't we, Nico? Scott Taylor being penned back by... Joe Croft getting over the line, and then the second semi-final, that tense first leg for Neil. I'm just trying to think about the whole the whole night uh, in, in one whole thing, because it's been a very, very strange evening, standard-wise. But I, I do believe that the right person won in the end. You look at the amount of darts at double that Neil Duff uh, was facing with Joe Croft and maybe in some other situations as well. You just get the feeling that maybe a phrase that Chris Mason says all the time, when your name's on the pot. Now, his name has been on that particular pot before, but maybe it was just destiny that it was going to be on there tonight because he did get a great deal of fortune and when he needed to perform, he did. He did do exactly that. Let's talk about the final then in a bit more detail. Duff took the early running and from there there was only one winner. Yeah, the 1-2-1 the one, one was, was key to victory and he, he looked the player who settled the quicker of the two, whether that's the experience of being a, a world champion and, um, and, and what you get from that and, and then the accolades that come with it or, or the fact that he in recent times has won the special week, won a, a week before that. He hasn't tasted defeat here uh, in a Saturday night for quite some time. And certainly hasn't. Scott Taylor's title defence has come to an end. How will we remember him as a champion, Paul? Very well. You think about the two weeks that he played concurrently, from week 12 to week 13 at the back end of the last series. He constantly went to the end of the tank to see if there was any vapour left. And the way he was able to perform at such a high level for two straight weeks, that's what I will remember. When he goes home to Bolton tomorrow 
after this experience here this week. He will have to admit to himself that he didn't play to the same level. That's why he's not going to be in Champions Week this time. In terms of Neil Duff, I know there's only four players into the Champions Week field, but when we confirm the 12, is he going to be right up there amongst the favourites? He certainly can't be ignored, that's for sure. He, 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 like I said, he, he's got it down to a fine art now. He knows how to prepare for it. He's a player that doesn't panic. He's a player that doesn't worry about level of performance. He worries about winning and, and winning the key matches. And that is what champions do. That's what good players do. That's why they win things. And over the years, he's, he's won pen, plenty, hasn't he? Let's, let's be honest, in, within the system he's been playing in. Final word. These lot, they're still staying around. They think there's another game going on. I think you two play an exhibition in a minute, aren't you? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. They, they wouldn't stay long if they were. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to turf them out, that's why. They've had a great time. Adam was at the, the back of the hall there and I applaud him for what he's done tonight. He could have left with his tail between his legs saying what a nightmare that was after what has uh, been a great journey this week. But he stuck around and he applauded the champion at the end. That just goes to show that uh, he's got some integrity, that lad. He definitely does. Thank you, gents. It's always a pleasure to be in both of your company and we'll do it again sometime soon. Right, mates, thank you. Nico, thank you. Thank you to you at home for joining us. Well, Neil Duff's becoming a real perennial champion here, isn't he, at the Super Series. That completes a perfect hat-trick for him and this time he's going to be going for the ultimate glory come May. Well, the roundabout continues here at the Super Series and there will be more swings and turns come Monday morning. We're going to see a sniper who's hoping to be the sharpest shooter, a man who's won the Shoot for the Moon competition in 2024. Warby's going to be waxing Liverpool and Glenn Dowant's here as well. What's there not to like? See you Monday. It's a fantastic finish David there Davies. from David Davies. Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? On four flag, David Evans. Phenomenal. Oh my goodness. Game shot of the match, Jericho.